The following program is rated TV MA LSV. It contains strong language, sexual situations, and violence. It is intended only for mature audiences. They gave me my theme music! What up, what up, what up, what up? What's going on, everybody? Appreciate everybody being here this evening. Raptor Cloak, I see you in the chat already. Uh, T'Challa Forever, TJ Never. Appreciate you guys being here. Um, everybody watching, the people that are going to be coming in. Um, appreciate you being here. Uh, Derby, what's going on? We're going to be getting into some things this evening, hanging out. What's going on, Connor? Sure, Triple Salute. Haven't seen you in a minute. Well, actually, you were here the last chat, I think, but you really didn't say much. You didn't say much the last chat, so appreciate you being here also. Um, let's see. I think we got some more people still coming in. Um, we're going to get into some things today, a few things. We're going to talk about the uh, Joker 2 trailer. Well, we're going to watch that together uh, all for the first time. That doesn't, that's still, we got, I think, 40 minutes, 45 minutes till that drops. Uh, that will be out, then we'll be dropping that. I think currently, if you've been paying attention to CinemaCon, um, Warner Brothers is currently taking the stage as their panel is currently giving their slate of what is to come for Warner Brothers and what we've got going on there. Um, so I'm pretty excited for the Joker trailer. I want to see I want to see what this first teaser is going to look like for sure. Uh, and I guess they said they got a bunch of other things that they're going to be showcasing and um, um, putting out there for the future of uh, what Warner Brothers has coming on. Um we're going to talk about uh, we'll talk about Joker too. So we'll talk about a few little other things. Nothing these these few here aren't major topics, uh, but we'll watch the Coca Cola Marvel trailer because I thought uh, or Marvel commercial because I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, we'll watch that. Um, we'll talk about Jonathan Majors um, being uh, the way they put it spared jail time. So we'll uh, talk about that a little bit. Uh, we'll talk about I can never I don't know if I'm ever pronouncing her name correctly. Is it uh, Legua Aqua? Cox that plays um, Echo. Um, she recently said that uh, she wanted to, she's ready for season two. So we'll talk about that. Um, we'll also talk about Ryan Coogler's untitled um, supernatural thriller that I guess is going to be involving vampires and things like that. We'll talk about that a little bit just because Haley Steinfeld has recently uh, been added to the cast. So we'll jump into that a little bit. Um, we'll talk about the Back to the Future reboot that J.J. Abrams is trying to uh, put together that would be starring Timothy Chalamet uh, in place of, um, um, gosh, name blank. Um, why am I blanking on uh, dude's name? Um, but Timothy Chalamet would be starring in that the reboot for uh, Back to the Future. Uh, we'll talk about it a little bit. This was... One that I wanted to talk about yesterday, if I was because I didn't know if I was going to stream yesterday for sure or not, because the news was kind of real slow. The only big, I think, the biggest thing yesterday was something that we've all talked about uh, before, and that was just simply that um, Robert Downey Jr. had said had said that he, you know, was interested in coming back. But that's all something we know. We all know that Robert Downey Jr. is going to be uh, back. Let me uh, actually do something really quick. I think I can pop this out. Yeah. Okay. The following program is rated TV MA. Okay, sorry, my fault, my fault, my fault. All right. Anyway, so we're going to talk about that a little bit too. Um, and then we'll talk about uh, one of the big things I really want to dis discuss is the well, the two big topics are obviously Fantastic Four plot rumors are kind of getting out there now. So we've kind of got some things going on with the Fantastic Four and what we can expect with the plot and what could happen within the movie. Um, and we're also going to talk about Deadpool 3. The, one of the big things we're going to talk about with Deadpool 3 is um, 
going to be tempering expectations for Deadpool 3. Uh, Alex Perez recently was answering some questions, but we're going to get into all of those things here soon. I appreciate everybody that's been uh, coming into the chat as well. Uh, Raymond, I see you here. Um, I appreciate you being here, Xavier. I also appreciate you being here, Groovy. D. Stizzle, appreciate you being here as well. Uh, Yeah, Echo uh, was talking about a season two, so um, uh, we're going to get into that a little bit and what she was saying uh, for that. Uh, But First things first, let's just get into some of these other things here. Um, We'll get into the Coca-Cola commercial. Uh, Marvel did the release day Coca-Cola commercial that I thought was pretty cool. So I was just like, let's watch it together because I don't know if everybody had seen it, if you cared to see it. Uh, But like I said, I thought it was pretty cool. So we'll watch this. Um, But one of the big things that I wanted to point out in this was that they are actually using, like, you know, X-Men, not... Xavier's uh, the team of X-Men, but the Juggernaut is in this. And, um, you know, that is just showing more that Marvel is actually pushing forward with move, using the X-Men more and more and more. And that's kind of really exciting to see. So uh, this is the commercial they put out. Sam. It's pretty dope. Sam did as much in that commercial as I expect him to do in the MCU as the new Captain America. Not shit. All he did was flying. But I thought that that um, I thought that that commercial was really cool. Um, like I said, they're using. I mean, even Colossus is in this um, this commercial as well. They're using more and more X Men, and I think that is really dope. We're starting to see the furtherment of them pushing, you know, forward with the X Men, something that we all want to see. So, I just thought that was something cool that we could all watch together. Like I said, just a little off the top thing before we start getting really into the topics and some of the things we're going to talk about. Uh, but this one is we'll spend a little bit more time on it as as an off the top, and this is the, some of the things going on with Jonathan Majors. Now, as we all know, Jonathan Majors uh, was let go, fired from the overall antagonist that was going to be Kang in the multiversal saga of Marvel's cinematic universe. And now that uh, the charges and everything have been uh, have been set and uh, his now we're we're on to the sentencing and everything like that um, past the sentencing, you know, he's he's been uh, what was it that he got? I forgot exactly what it was. uh, what was it that he got in his sentencing? Um, I think it has to be what is domestic viol- domestic uh, counseling or something. He has to see a therapist or something like that. Um, but either way, we all said, you know, back then, some of the things that were being said about it, I, you know, we didn't over here cover it as much as like Chill did or as much as Dre Mac did or some of the others that did great you know, great, great, great work on their videos and their coverage of the case. Um, 
But the one of the things that I did say is that it was a witch hunt, and I still say that today. Um, one of the other things that I said was anytime that you see a strong, and, and I know a lot of people like to say, oh, don't make it about race or whatever, whatever, but it, it, it it's not so much that I've heard people say, well, why do black people always make such things about race? And it's not so much that black people are making it about race. Um, it's not it's it's a, we are playing the card, as I always say, uh, playing the card to the hand that's being dealt to us. And if it's something that I smell or see as racist, well, Aflac, I'm going to say that it's racist. So. But I'm seeing I'm saying I said all that to say that uh, one of the things that I mentioned with Jonathan Majors in this whole thing was anytime you see a strong, you know, black male lead or somebody coming up in Hollywood or somebody empowering other black, um, you know, other young black men or black men or the black community or whatever, that person is typically uh, taken out of, you know, that position. Um I've mentioned this before. Some of you may not see it as the same, but I say it is the same. Same thing like with T'Challa. That is one of the reasons that T'Challa is not currently on the screen because it empowers strong young black men. And that's not something that that's not the ideal that they want to be pushing out. That is not the narrative that 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 Hollywood wants pushed out. I mean, you you go back to the 90s. Sure. You had Denzel Washington and who uh denzel washington was that that and and still is with uh, and within the black community i guess you could say the uh the pillar of what did what what uh black males in hollywood were in the 90s and things like that but if you look at now anytime we get any type of um black male actor or whatever of course we're going to try to stand and of course yes a professor film fan like will will smith as well um but of course, we're going to rally behind that person because it's so rarely seen. It's not something that we that, you know, we get to see within our community often. And I know that, you know, some people might get so sick of the, oh, well, always talking about the community or always. Well, it, it but it it but it is the point. It is something that we are constantly discussing. Um, and that is wanting, you know, to boost up our community, wanting to boost up our people, wanting to. That's why it, you know, made me so upset. Not, I don't want to say made me so upset, but it, I scuffed at it uh, when um, heavyset uh, comedian. I don't know. I'm blanking on names again today. Heavyset comedian made the the comments he made about Taraji P. Henson. You know, instead of making those comments and why not rally behind your black sister and say, oh, I see where you're coming from or whatever it may be um, and, and, and just stand strong with her. But. It's in Hollywood that we see that all the time where if if you are reaching a certain pinnacle and you are not the uh, – and you have a certain color of melanin in your skin, you are going to be taken out of that position. And that's exactly what was happen, uh, that happened with Jonathan Majors in that uh, – in this position. Um, um, and I've – you know, we talked about it a little bit uh when it all when it all went down and people started making the rumors or the assumptions that Marvel was going to fire Jonathan Majors before they had fired him. Um, and one of the things that I had brought up during a stream that we did was the the current Marvel actors that are currently uh, or not current Marvel actors. You know, Robert Downey Jr. had his whole past that he had and then went on to be the grandfather of the MCU. Um, you have who is the uh, villain of the Infinity Saga, Thanos, Josh Brolin with his past. You had William Hurt, who was going to go on to play Red Hulk before his passing, who also played, you know, Thunderbolt Ross throughout from 2008's uh, Incredible Hulk until, again, his passing had his past with his domestic violence and things like that. But yet, whenever we shine the light of domestic violence, and I put quote around domestic violence, um, and while I'm saying those quotes and using that around domestic violence, I will show you as to why I'm doing that. Now, most of you already know because you've been here, you've watched you've watched these things, you've seen everything, but I'm going to, as I'm talking, um, I put quotes around domestic violence because, you know, we shine this light on, on Jonathan Majors and his domestic violence, and um, it gets this whole case. It gets not just a whole case, but it's, it's getting all the, you know, the negative press that he was getting from it. You know, I think we even covered the judge that he had that had a history of um, racist cases and things like that. But yet Jonathan Majors is fired from um, Marvel. At one point, a lot of people were saying going to be blackballed in Hollywood and I, you know, and um, blackballed in Hollywood. Um, people were asking is, you know, 
is he going to be able to pick himself back up from this or whatever, whatever. But here we have this man running from this woman, the same woman that, you know, claimed abuse, the same woman that claimed that she had, you know, what was it? Her the hand, her hand was I, again, I didn't cover the case like that. I did not cover the case like that. But her hand was fucked up. But using the same fucked up hand to uh, to party on the rest of that night, comb through her hair and do everything. I mean, look, at she is she is literally sprinting after the. And again, we watched this video. Everybody has seen this video, but it just goes to show you. And I think I said this, too, when everything happened with Jonathan Majors. If the shoe was on the other foot and this was a completely different video played in reverse and it was Jonathan Majors chasing this white woman, the crowd, the outrage would be astronomical. But because you have this woman who has screamed and, and again I, I i i did i said this too when we covered it because you have this woman who was screaming uh that she was abused and things like that and here she is again using the same hand she's laughing and uh, with her friends and all that kind of shit um the same you have this woman chasing him but if the shoe was on the other foot and i also used the example when we talked about it um with um emma teal um rosewood um other instances where, again, if you are a black male and a white woman cries wolf, you are in, you, you, you're basically signing a death, a, a death certificate there. Not only that, there have been times, you know, I've, I've mentioned, I think I mentioned this whenever uh, we talked about it, but in my own personal life, uh, dealing with cops and how cops deal with young black men or black men in general, uh, it's a... Uh, this whole the whole situation with Jonathan Majors was unfortunate um, and unfortunate is a, is a terrible, terrible uh, word for this for in this situation. But the whole thing with Jonathan Majors was um, a, a witch hunt. It was definitely something that uh, uh, I believe was uh, calculated more than anything. Um, and. Uh, do I believe that Jonathan Majors is going to bounce back from all of this? Of course, I think he's going to bounce back from it. Will, will that be with Marvel? No, I don't think that's going to be within Marvel's realm. Do I think that Marvel should give the role uh, uh, of of uh, Kang back to Jonathan? Of course I do. But do I think that they're going to do that? No, I don't think that they're going to do that at all. I do, however, think that you know he should be able to go on and finish. Um, if I was Jonathan Majors, personally, I wouldn't want to. I would not want to, if, even if it was offered back to me, uh, offered that is thank you, but, but we're going to decline. I would, I would, I personally would not want to. I wouldn't want to work with a company that uh, did not, you know, stand behind me or, or even, you know, uh, come out and say anything. But yet here we are defending, um, you know, or it's saying it, that it's okay if it's a Robert Downey Jr. or that it's okay if it's a, a William Hurt or it's okay if it's a Josh Brolin or any of the other, because there's others in there. I just don't remember who every, I don't remember everybody's, uh, uh, everybody has, everybody has shit. I don't remember everybody's shit that they had going on. Um, but um, it's the same thing. So it's just, so now that he's got, I forget exactly what the sentencing or what it was, um, uh, but, you, you know, you got people saying he hasn't accepted responsibility and uh, he'll do it again and he'll hurt other women. And um, this is a man who thinks he's above the law and all that shit. Um, but yet you have this video of him being chased. And uh, but like I said, um, the sentencing is out. Uh, I think it's just, I forget exactly. I believe it was just the therapy and uh, domestic violence something. Uh, but. But it's a witch hunt, and um, uh, Dre Mack and and uh, Chill and the others that have been covering this and that are still covering this are going strong on their channels and backing Jonathan Majors. And of course, we over here back Jonathan Majors as well. But if you want more um, video detail into the case and hereafter and what's going on with Jonathan Majors currently, head over to uh, Dre Mack's channel, head over to Chill's channel. I believe that they are still covering all of those things. Uh, but I did want to mention that. Um, the next thing that we'll jump in here and talk about is, um, and again, I don't know that I'm saying her name correctly. Is it, is it Aqua, Alequa, Cox, uh, Echo, the girl that plays Echo, the, the actress that plays Echo. Um, she, um, she recently sat down in an interview. I don't, I don't remember who the interview was with. I think it was, um, at the, uh, 
Was it at? I don't remember exactly where it was, but she did just do a recent interview. Um, And in that interview, uh, she talked about how she would like Echo to fight Green Goblin in a potential uh, Echo uh, season two. Uh, Her exact quote was, I'd like more of Maya's family. I wouldn't mind it if they went to New York City and all got revenge on those people that have hurt them and and also used the powers of their ancestors that they have. I think that'd be cool. I think that'd be a cool storyline and that Green Goblin and the Green Goblin. That would be pretty cool. Um, I don't know. So I guess no one's told her. Has no one told Allegua Aqua Cox that there is going to be no season two of Echo? Uh, there should not have even been a season one of Echo. Um, let me tell you how. She, and again, I, I, I know she's just being a, she seems like she's a very sweet person. I'm not I'm not dumping on her. She seems like she's a very sweet individual, things like that. She just got, you know, a shit character and a shit raw deal with her show is what she got. Um, but that storyline, and she just seems excited, you know, to just want to get back in the MCU, but that storyline is shit. No one, no one, no one watched Echo Season 1. No one would dare watch an Echo Season 2 where the family goes to get revenge on Fisk and his thugs while using their ancestral powers uh, that none of us even understood in, in Echo. Well, I don't want to speak for everybody, but that I didn't understand in Echo. Uh I wouldn't watch that. That doesn't seem interesting to me. But I think that somebody over at Marvel, Kevin, pull her aside. Somebody pull, you know, let her know, hey, sweetheart, I wouldn't mention Echo Season 2 in uh, these these, uh, interviews any longer because that's not happening. I think the extent of that we're going to see uh, that character anymore in the MCU is going to be, I I believe she is showing up in the Daredevil, um, in the Daredevil series. I also believe that... From just what we know with what they're trying to do with the uh, Spider-Man 4, I think she's also going to show up in Spider-Man 4. That's a the grain of salt type of deal, but I believe she is also showing up in Spider-Man 4. We do know Daredevil is, but I believe she is. I'm not really sure. Um, Secret Wars, I don't know where she would fit in. I don't, you know, I don't know where you where you fit in uh, uh, an Echo. To you know what what does what is, what does Echo bring to see? I I wouldn't be interested in seeing Echo at Secret Wars. I wasn't interested in seeing the Echo show. Um, did not watch the finale. Um, and as far as uh, her fighting the Green Goblin, no, no, I no. Spider Man within the MCU needs to fight the Green Goblin first before we have Echo trying to take on Spider Man villains. But you know, if you guys are interested in an Echo season two, you let me know down below in the comments. Did you watch Echo season one? Do you want to see an Echo season two, or would you really like to see that whole Echo Green Goblin fight in New York with the ancestral powers? But you let me know what you guys think down below. And now we'll move into uh, some of the actual topics here. Um, let's see, Liam, I appreciate you being here. JD, appreciate you being here. Raymond, I appreciate you being here. Uh, the train guy, I appreciate you being here as well. Um, yes, uh, that train guy, as I think you're asking about the, uh, Joker trailer that does drop in about 17 minutes. So we'll be watching that then. Um, yeah, that was phase on. Thank you, Raymond. That was phase on fat ass. that said that. Uh, yes, Raptor Cloak. I'd say Lawrence Fishburne too. Uh, those are others as well. Uh, but when you know, but in, in during that time, who was that nigga? It was Denzel. You know, Lawrence Fishburne was great too. Obviously, Will was. You know, Will was Will Smith, uh, but Denzel was Denzel. Um, and we've got uh, Andre. I appreciate you being here. Antonio Films, appreciate it. Xavier, appreciate it. Appreciate everybody being here and hanging out. Um, Let's see what you guys are saying. Xavier said, what makes her think we want a season two? Yeah, that's really it. What makes her think she wants a season two? D Sizzle said, yeah, uh, she seems nice, but bruh. Yeah, like I said, she seems nice. Like, I'm not dumping on her. It's the same way I talk about Daisy Ridley. Daisy Ridley seems like she is a very, very, very pleasant young lady. But when she's recently been in interviews talking about I'm coming at Ray different, I'm doing this different, I think that I have such a different approach on it, a different mindset on it, but fans don't. She can go in filming with a different mindset. She can go in with all her yogas and whatever else that she has learned, uh, you know, in wanting to perfect the character of Ray. And that's great that she wants to do that. But the only problem with that is we as fans – 
don't give a shit about Ray. I don't I don't care what new twist they bring in with Ray. I don't care how Ray has mentally developed as a character because I never cared about Ray as a character to begin with. And again, that's not Daisy Ridley's fault. That is simply Lucasfilm and Disney's fault. She seems lovely. No one gives a fuck, though. I mean, and I know she talked about in another interview, it was hard for her to really find roles after the Ray role and things like that. Again, that's not, it's not her fault. That's, it's, uh, I watched her in, uh, what was the movie? I don't even remember the name of the movie. I actually didn't even finish the movie, but it was with her and Tom Holland where you couldn't speak or something or something like that. They could only speak telepathically. It was, it was not a good movie. It was not a good movie. Um, but I, uh, anything with Ray, it's not. So I, I look at her the same way I look at the whole Echo thing. Uh, she she seems nice, but who gives a fuck about an Echo too? Antonio said, uh, "Let me see." Antonio said, "Actually, I'm gonna pull y'all's here." Okay, Antonio said, "The power to make people sad." LOL. Um, D. Stizzle said, need Norman running those Dark Avengers. Yep, still waiting on uh, Elektra season one. I think we all, I think uh, some people were saying that. I know, D. Stizzle, you said that then too, that, you know, that was much preferred. People would have preferred an Elektra uh, series over an Echo Limited series. Um, Geek Ledger, appreciate you being here. He said, I didn't mind Echo. I think if they're going to do season two uh, or future appearances, the audience needs clarification of her powers. I would agree with the clarification of her powers because I'm still not clear on that. I'm not clear on how that all works. Um, when I watched the trailer, I did not mind. I, you know, At first, before I even saw the trailer, I was like, oh, I'm not going to be watching Echo because I had reached that point with the MCU where I was like, if this doesn't take us toward the multiversal saga or take us into the multiverse, which, which is where we're supposed to be hanging out at this point within this saga. I really don't care. Um, but after I saw the trailer, I was like, okay, this is a little different. This does seem interesting, but uh, no, I quickly got uninterested in echo. Um, I didn't, didn't really care for it. Uh, but you also said, I think before they do anything with Ray in live action, we need Clone Wars treatment, an animated series. I can agree with that. You know what? I was actually just saying the other day after the Rise of the Empire, which, by the way, May 4th, we're here all fucking day for Star Wars. All day. The, the, um, the um, Rise of the Empire, I'm going to have that out first, but then we're, we're just going to be sitting back chatting about it, chatting about potential things that they could do in the future, other, just a lot of different things. But when I saw the Rise of the Empire trailer, which was a very lovely surprise, um, I said, Lucasfilm honestly thrives with uh, their animation. And when I say thrives with their animation, I'm talking Rebels, Clone Wars, uh, that Rise of the Resistance, or whatever the hell that's called, no. Uh, but their um, Clone Wars, Rebels animation, it, Bad Batch, Great. They, they they thrive with that. And I think stories like that, if you want to tell these in between stories, wasting film, wait, you know, ha, wait, wasting, you know, actors times with the actors that because these people are aging, you know, obviously getting older. We can't even use Luke right now without having to uh, deep fake him or whatever. But if you want to tell these stories with Luke, there is that animation. You have that animation lane that you could use. I would love to see animated stories told with Luke. You know, in between uh, episodes, after episode six, if we, if we can't do films like that, I would love to see stuff like that. You know, I think they thrive with the animation and I, you know, it, those in between stories could be told that way. More fleshed out Ray in an animated format could honestly work. It honestly could. Now, you would have to you would have to convince people because the, the, the Star Wars fandom hates her. Um but you would have to convince people, but I think that it could be something that works. Get better example, Omega. None of us were vibing. Some of you may still be in that same position where you're not vibing with Omega. I was one that I was not vibing at all with Omega season one of Bad Batch. Ask me about Omega now. I'm not sitting here saying that's one of my favorite characters in Star Wars, but 
I like the character. I don't mind the character. She's grown as a character since we very first saw her in, in that episode one of season one of Bad Batch to where she currently is now. She's a very different character, very mature, older Omega. Um, so I said that to say, you know, then I didn't care for her. Now I do. And that took with that took time. That took me growing with Omega. That took me three seasons. But that took me going with Omega Go, you know, growing with Omega, seeing her mature, seeing her uh, develop as a character and things like that. I think with Ray, like you said, uh, uh, Geek Ledger, that could be made done or that could be done with an animated series for Ray. Uh, so I agree. I agree completely. I would definitely think I think I would definitely tune in to an animated Ray story type of deal. Uh, it's the animation that sells for Lucasfilm, I think. Right now, they have not impressed in the film department uh, since... For me, Rogue One. Rogue One's the best thing Disney has done with Lucasfilm. Um, uh, Movie-wise, movie-wise, it's the best thing Disney's done with Lucasfilm. Um, and they haven't impressed me since then. So, um, D. Stizzle said, Comic Echo Power said it's similar to Taskmaster, but they ignored... Yes, they did. Um, because they didn't want it to be... I remember they talked about it at the very beginning. They didn't want it to be similar to Taskmaster. They said they've already got that going on, and they didn't want that to be that. And I'm just like, but that's... That's what it is. So, uh, but yeah, they changed that. Um, appreciate you being here, Gray. D. Sizzle said, Echo using sign language to communicate makes sense, but not but not on the receiving end. She would, uh, she would be an expert. Yeah, and they took that away too. You know, that was something, another power that the uh, writer or director said that they didn't want the character to have. And I'm like, but that is one of the definitive things that makes Echo Echo. She's an expert lip reader, like, like D. Sizzle said. Um, Antonio Films said uh, the height of the boss fight with Kingpin uh, was her tapping him on the head and making him relive a pivotal childhood moment. I was like, huh. See, I didn't watch, so I didn't know that. I, I, I skipped through, and I still didn't play it, but I just skipped through when I saw, like, she was in that, she was in her uh, her tribal robes, and then she had, I think her family was beside her and then there was like some weird shit glowing around. and then i said nope not watching it not interested don't care um d stizzle said facts on animated loot clone war style yeah that'd be dope that'd be dope somebody did a fan mock-up of what it would look like uh he looked dope i would i i would definitely watch that bro that's and that's where you could i don't know if you you know well, okay, yes, that's even where you could throw in some of the legends material. You mean look at look at look at Rebels. We didn't we thought Thrawn would we never knew Thrawn would join canon or would join canon until Rebels. They pulled him in in the animation style. For people that didn't know Thrawn, that weren't privy to Thrawn prior to Rebels, they got to know Thrawn through Rebels and that got to see how formidable of a villain and character that Thrawn truly is in the Star Wars universe. You could do the exact same thing with like Luke telling Luke story and things like that. You could pull in um, Mara Jade. You could pull in, um, you know, other Legends material stuff that is now no longer canon, but Legends now. There's a there's a lot of potential there with Lucasfilm. And I'm sure these are conversations that a lot of them have had. But who makes the, who has the final say over the, all of that, as uh, we all know, is KK. And um, she doesn't like fun. So we won't get things like that. Um D. Stizzle said, Omega is how you do a kid the right way. She's not awesome at everything or annoying. She's very likable, in my opinion. Yeah, she is likable. She is. She is. At the very beginning, I thought she was annoying, but she is very likable. And I think that obviously was the point at the beginning. You know, she was a she was a lot younger then, but now she's she's come a long way. So I like the character. Uh, Geek Ledger said, heck yeah, I'd take a season three of Resistance. Uh, that is between The Last Jedi and Rise of Sky Rise of Skywalker. Follows Rey training uh, under Leia uh, and the Force Ghost Luke. Force Ghost Luke. Yeah. Um, now, if it's in that Clone Wars animation style, yes, I could see that. I could see that. I would take that. I would take that, and uh, again, I think you'd have to sell a lot of other Star Wars fans on that, but I think, not just that, because there are a lot of Star Wars fans that don't even watch the animated stuff. For, you know, I've talked to so many Star Wars fans, they're like, ah, oh, no, I don't watch the Clone Wars, I don't watch Rebels, and I'm like, bro, you are missing out. You are, you know, for those people that hated the prequels, and I grew up, that was my first thing, was the prequels. I was, my first uh, film that I saw was episode two. Um, second grade episode two is when I saw that. And then from there, my, I took step into a larger universe. So, um, 
But there are a lot of people that hate the prequels that I think if you watch Clone Wars might make the prequels somewhat better for you. I don't know, but I, I uh, Clone Wars, Clone Wars, the animation, everything, great. Um, D Sizzle said Thrawn looks cool in Tales of the Empire. Yeah, he looks he looks dope. He looks great. Uh, Geek Ledger said, I didn't hate the boss fight. I think it was ultimately meaningless, though. She fixed his trauma, but Kingpin stays the same. I guess the psychological commentary there, but uh, it went nowhere. And then Grace said, they might as well, they might as well, uh, them bringing in Thrawn should be the way to go forward with some of the Timothy Zahn material. Oh, yeah, I agree. I completely agree. Completely agree. Not a lot of people knew who Thrawn was, you know, when uh, Rebels, when he made his TV debut in Rebels, um, but quickly went on to become a very, a very big fan favorite. So I think that that could work for sure. Um, but we'll move on here to the next or the, the next topic here. The next topic we're going to move to is just going to be Ryan Coogler's untitled supernatural uh, thriller. Um, so Ryan Coogler's got an untitled supernatural thriller coming out and At first, I was not interested in this at all, and the reason I wasn't interested in it was just simply because Ryan Coogler really hurt me with Wakanda Forever. (laughs) He really did. Like, you know, I've watched other Ryan Coogler, you know, uh, uh, flicks like, you know, Fruitville Station, and and just things that we've talked about before, things that we talked about during Wakanda for the Wakanda Forever uh, campaigning and all that kind of stuff was that it seems like. Kugler has a thing for black trauma. Kugler has a thing for, uh, I don't know, black death and things like that. And I just, I, I, so when I saw his name attached to it, I, I instantly just wasn't interested. Just as uninterested as I am when people keep attaching his name as wanting him to direct Secret Wars. No. Kugler's not that guy. Kugler's not the guy for Secret Wars. And, and to just, since we're on that just for a second, just to diverge, somebody tweeted, I don't remember who it was, tweeted out four pictures of four different directors and said, who would you choose? And only one, there was only one answer, and that was the Russos. The Russos are the only people that I honestly want Secret Wars in their hands. Do I think it's going to be in their hands? I don't know. Uh, I don't know if, you know, what Marvel and them have going on, but I would love for the Russos to do it. But that was just a little diverge there. Uh, but Ryan Coogler's not that guy. So when I saw him attached to this supernatural thriller, I was like, oh, I'm no, I, I'm... <laughs> I'm good on the trauma. Don't need to see it. Um, But here are some of the things that we have heard that have gotten me somewhat. I'll tell you, I'll get when we get to the part that got me interested about it. I'll let you know. So we've heard that it's uh, going to be a period piece taking place during the Jim Crow era, um, that vampires uh, will be a part of the film. Um, We've heard that the film is going to be coming out March 7th, 2025. It's going to be its release date. Um, It will be set in the 1930s. So that again, the Jim Crow era South. Um, uh, Michael B. Jordan will possibly, I believe, this is a rumor, I don't know if this is true or not, going to be playing um, two people, uh, twins. He's going to be playing himself, or not himself, but he's going to be playing uh, his brother and the character he's going to be playing as well. Uh, so he'll be playing twins. Um, the film will have a lot of anime influence because I guess Ryan Coogler is a very big anime fan. Uh, so he is going to have a lot of anime influence in it. Uh, and then it goes on to say um, that, and this is the part that got me interested. Now, I saw this a couple weeks ago. But this is the part that got me interested. Not enough to talk about it with everybody, but it was enough to he's he's just asleep and snoring. But it was enough to get me interested in it. Sorry, dogs uh, sleep and snoring loud. Um, and that was that the that the the film would uh, the plot would have vampires going against the uh, KKK. And when I saw, it, I said, "What the fuck?" <laughs> uh, but it was like, but that's it. Like it caught my interest. Like that. Okay, that's that. That's interesting. Um, um, and then it also said the rumors were that it also has the potential of uh, becoming a franchise, uh, a type of franchise, a franchise, uh, the potential of becoming a franchise. Um, and now Haley Steinfeld has joined the cast. So it had me interested with the whole vampires uh, fighting the KKK in the Jim Crow era. So I'm con- I'm so it's a thriller. I, there's so many different ways that this could go, but it's it's a thriller, so I'm I, it does have me interested. It, it, 
interested, has my uh, interest speak for sure. But this is what The Hollywood Reporter had to say about Haley Steinfeld uh, joining the cast. They said... Um, the busy project or the busy project, uh, the object of high profile bidding war and January heads beca- before cameras uh, later this month in New Orleans and has ferociously cast up. Uh, I'm not butchering her name. Delroy Lindo and Jack o- O'Connell, among others, uh, make up the heady cast sheet. Uh, little is known about the project, and what is known has yet to be confirmed by either the studio or Coogler. Insiders say the feature is set in the Jim Crow era South and possibly involves both vampires and Southern supernatural traditions. Interesting, bro. Uh, that like I I like supernatural shit. Like I may that's why the spooky side, supernatural, magic side of the MCU piques my interest so much. I think that's why I'm so ready for Agatha, while a lot of you are like, fuck Agatha, but I'm really actually ready for Agatha uh, just because of the supernatural side of things, the magic. I, that I've always been interested in in uh, all of that. Um, but in its, it goes on to say, involves both vampires and the southern supernatural traditions. Jordan may even be playing dual roles as twin brothers. However, uh, some hazy casting details have leaked. Um, again, the name I didn't want to butcher, not sure. May be playing Jordan's romantic interest, but in which, uh, but of which twin. O'Connell may be a racist antagonist. And Steifeld, in Steifeld's uh, part, uh, is all sealed up in a coffin. Uh, Kugler wrote this. Kugler wrote the script. Is all Kugler wrote the script and is also producing via his production company, uh, Proximity Media. Uh, Kugler and Sev again names are also producing. Uh, the studio has set the studio has set a March 7, 2025 release date. The project first revealed in January was the subject of heated bidding war. Um, why are they why they put that again? Uh, heated bidding war um, in the writers with Warners coming out on top, thanks to a unique deal that we will see some of the movies ri- we'll see some of the movies rights uh, reverting to the filmmaker over the course of several decades. Steinfeld was last seen reprising her fan favorite her fan favorite Hawkeye role of Archer Kate Bishop in last year's The Marvels. Uh, she also recently starred in an executive produced and executive produced Dickinson's Apple TV plus series comedy drama centered in author. I don't care about that's not about uh, the, the vampire shit. So um, they are doing this uh, period vampire movie. And I'm actually interested, especially with the, um, you know, anytime that they, I'm not an anime fan like that, but I, I like the style of anime. I like the look of anime. I'm not like a, I want to sit down and watch anime with you person. Uh, but the whole, the fighting is always cool. You know, I, again, I wasn't a, even a big Dragon Ball Z fan like that growing up, but when Dragon Ball Z was, you know, on the Boo Saga, I, I really enjoyed. Uh, so I can compare it to something like that. Um, um, the fighting, the, 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 you know, the sounds, everything. So I, I think that anime as a, as an idea is great. Just me watching it. No, but I think that if you, you adapt anime's idea and put it onto a film like this could be very interesting. Um, the, so there's that, there's the whole, again, the thing that sparked my interest from the beginning was the KKK involvement with fighting vampires. Um, so we'll have to wait and see again. There's not much that's really known about the film right now, other than the, the rumors of um, the KKK and then the um, um, being a franchise later on, possibly those are the only things really known about or rumored about it. But the things that are known are some of the acting, the actors that are going to be in the, the in the film and that it's going to be a period piece set in the Jim Crow era South. So uh, I'm going to be watching it. And of course I'll cover whatever else is coming out out about it when they more casting rumors, more plot rumors, um, and things like that as they come out we will cover them and obviously when the film comes out we'll give a review as well but are you guys interested in a film that ryan coogler is directing first and foremost or were you kind of like me at the beginning where it's like oh, i've been traumatized enough by ryan coogler i don't want to sit through another one of his uh, trauma-filled films or are you uh were you kind of like me also where after you read some of the things about this film, some of the that some of those things caught your interest, and that's something that you're now interested in wanting to see, or you not give a damn about any of this altogether. But let us know what you guys are thinking down below, and I'll read some of those uh, comments there. Let's see. Um. 
Official MG said, I can't wait for this new Ryan Coogler movie. I love vampires and loving the cast too. Plus, it's supposed to have Southern supernatural elements and anime influence. Yep, so you're on board with all the things that I'm on board with it for. Um, um, I, I actually, again, was not interested in this at first, but after reading some of the things, it did pique my interest. So I'm, I'm actually really interested in this film. Um, D. Sizzle said, uh, struggle vampires. <laughs> Uh, Haley, uh, he also said Haley does have a vampire vibe about her. Yeah, she, I was thinking the same thing when I saw, like, this picture especially. Like, she honestly may be, uh, playing a vampire. Um, Profess the film fan said, I know she, uh, she won't be the love interest. No, she's, she's not gonna be the love interest. Grace says she's playing a mixed vampire. Interesting dynamic. Uh, Geek Leader, or Ledger, sorry, said, as a dude who grew up in uh, the American South, this is, intrigues me. I'm a sucker, for, I'm a sucker, LOL, for vampires. No pun intended. Uh, like, I'm not really a horror guy, but fantasy in general piques my interest. Yeah, again, same reasons for me. Like, the supernatural, I think, again, I think I've said this before, my favorite season for those American Horror Story uh, viewers was Coven. Coven, I thought, was brilliantly done. I thought you had some brilliant, um, obviously, they do recycle their actors and actresses and things like that. You know, they'll play different roles. Um, thank you for the subscriber. Thank you, new subscriber. Um, but we will get, um, you know, roles um They'll play new roles. The actors and actors will play different roles um, in different seasons. But Coven, you had Angela Bassett playing Marie Laveau. You had uh, Jessica Lange as the Supreme. Bro, that was just a great season. The first three seasons for me are the best. Uh, after that, I, I fell off. But Coven, for me, that's, again, that's why I'm ready for Agatha. I don't know how witchy and supernatural we're getting in Agatha, but I'm, I'm ready for Agatha. Uh, let's see... Uncanny said, when will the Joker 2 trailer release? Oh, you know what? That might be out now. Should have been out maybe five minutes ago. So we'll check that in just a second. I'm from Europe, so time zones are a little messy. So here, it should have been out 6.30. I thought they said that it was going to drop 6.30. Um, I can check that really quick, and let's see if that is out. It would be all, all over Twitter if it is. Um, let's see. Okay, so it is not out yet. So they must be. So Warner Brothers right now is on currently on stage at CinemaCon, and I believe they are talking about Ferocia right now uh, with uh, Chris Hemsworth. Uh, so they are they have not gotten to Joker yet. I'm sure they're saving Joker for the very last thing that they discuss. Uh, this was 16 minutes ago. It says during the sizzle reel we saw shots of Joker and Harley Quinn smoking at a smoking at a prison another scene of just harley so they saw they showed a sizzle reel of it but nothing um nothing in depth yet uh looks like they have superman the christopher reeve story will release this fall in theaters um so yeah they're 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 not there yet but i'm sure they are close close to it so but whenever that trailer drops we are going to be watching it live we'll be watching it together uh let's see Grand Region Thrag said, is this the Michael B. Jordan film? Yes, this is the one I believe he is helping direct. If I'm saying that correct, I believe he's helping direct it. Uh, D. Sizzle said, I've been cougared, cougared out. Oh, yeah. Like I said, it, it, when I saw his name originally attached, I was like, nah. And then when they said it's going to be, a, before, I, before I knew it was about vampires, I, I saw it was going to be a period piece about black folks. I said, oh, <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> I was like, I'm not watching that. I'm good. Uh, but um, no, it again has my interest. Uh, Jabari Muhammad said to hell with Coogler. <laughs> Groovy said, uh, I'll never watch another Coogler movie. <laughs> Xavier said, I also don't want to sit through another Coogler struggle trauma uh, fest. I will have to wait and see. I'm I'm <laughs> see, we're all that's why y'all are here, because we all think the same. Um, Big A, again, appreciate that uh, subscription. Said, did the trailer come out yet? Not yet. Still waiting. Uh, Connor Show Triple Salute said he should be able to uh, do a good job with just with with this. Just leave BP alone. I agree. No, no BP3 should be in his future. Uh, Gray said, uh, if it keeps Coogler from the Black Panther franchise, I'm all for it. Yeah, let's keep his uh, schedule busy. Let's have this be a franchise so he can stay busy. Um, Grand Region Thrag said a sheaf in black. Haley? No. Um, 
The sizzle said, struggle blood, a black vampire story. <laughs> Greek Ledger said, I think Michael B. Jordan should take over for Coogler regarding Black Panther. I really thought his directing talent was great with Creed 3. I thought he did good on Creed 3 as well. Um, Jabari said, I think her grandmother is one half. Are we talking Steinfeld? Uh, Pookie Wood said, Coven was great, and I love that they, re- oh, I love they recycle the actors, too. I love that, too. I, it took me a minute, like, because after I first saw the first uh, Murder House, and then I saw the actors again, and I was like, oh, so they just, because I didn't know anything about American Horror Story. I was like, oh, so they just reused, but I like that. I like it a lot, too. Um, it's, and it definitely shows range. And the reason I say it shows range, Sarah Paulson. Sarah Paulson, her ability to play these different characters every season. And then she went on to do that, which I hated only got one season during 2020. Uh, the nurse, nurse ratchet that she did that bro, Sarah Paulson's great. She is a very, I, it, to, she has so much range, bro. Her her role in Twelve Years a Slave as Mistress Epps, I hated that bitch. <laughs> like she, I, she, she's she's a phenomenal actress. She's a phenomenal actress. She has great range. So I agree. Um, let's see. Uh, Grand Ranger Thrax said, "LOL, she's supposed to be a black woman. That's crazy." Pookie Wood said, "Agree on Coogler. He's not getting my money." Raptor Cloak said, "I'm also for Michael B. Jordan directing the BP franchise down the road. Maybe he'd bring back." our Wakandan king, possibly. Um, Kyle said, Planet Fanatics, I love your content, bro. Thanks for caring about the community. Uh, With that being said, I feel like Coogler gets so much hate. What was he supposed to do? You know, I... that is such a that that and I, first of all, let me address everything you said at the beginning. Thank you so much. That means the uh, most to me. Yeah, you have no idea. So I appreciate you being here um, so much. Now, as far as what he was supposed to do, that is a that is a deep dive question. Um, um, one that we've gone in depth before, but that is a deep dive question for me. If I could just TLDR it, I think I would say time. With time, there could have been so much more of a deci- a better decision made, um, because when you have Nate Moore, who was the who's one of the executive producers over at Marvel Studios, coming out saying things like, "Oh, well, it took us seconds uh, to decide that we weren't going to recast the character," I don't think that that's obviously that's not enough time to make such a pivotal decision like removing the franchise's main character. Um, so I would I, that's. That's what I would say for a little TLDR time. Take the time out to sit back, really think about, is this the decision, the right decision that I need to be making for this franchise that I'm helming, that I'm the director of, that I want to see, you know, go in, go in to, where I want. Because he, he even said in interviews, this was not the that wasn't the original plan for the Black Panther film. He had other ideas that he was going to do, um, you know, uh, Killing T'Challa didn't have to be the end all be all. I understand that, you know, he did lose a friend, um, someone that he, you know, claims to have been his friend, someone that he loved and, you know, claimed to have loved and things like that. I don't want to say loved, but claimed to have loved and things like that. I think with that, he could have said, okay, uh, yeah, my 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 friend passed away and I am mourning my friend's passing and we as a, a cast and crew or whoever else is mourning the passing. And again, I'm not diminishing. I said I've said this so many times I'm talking about this. I'm not diminishing their feelings. I, I don't know these people. I don't know their personal relationships with Chad or anything like that. But um, I'm only on the outside from the outside looking in and from the outside looking in. That wasn't the decision that should have been made. The decision that should have been made was, yeah, mourn. Mourn, and no one, no one puts a time stamp on mourning. If you were mourning, if you're still mourning, you know Chadwick today. That, that that's your that's no one can put any type of time stamp on mourning. But what we can put a time stamp on is doing your job, is coming back and do having the ability to do your job. And what I say, do your job, I do mean if killing. T'Challa was the only creative idea that you could come up with. The the only creative idea that you could come up with was the real life tragedy of a man, a real man, and put that real life tragedy on a fictional character, then there should have been some more creatives in the writer's room. And I say that because you look at Superman, you look at, you know, and I'm using Superman here because Superman is the pinnacle of pinnacle of of, of superheroes. That is the, the standard. Superman is the standard. 
We are about to watch in 2025 a brand new Superman movie with a brand new Superman actor. And I guarantee you, if I was to ever have kids, I don't want children, but if I was to ever have children, when I do have children, when they were able to be old enough to enjoy the, some of these spaces that I enjoy, like comic books and this sci-fi and this, this crazy, kooky uh, um, um, fantasy world, they would then have a their Superman, the Superman that they, the actor or whoever's playing Superman in their generation. Superman, these fictional characters are generational characters. They should not be have a timestamp with the actors or actresses that play them. When you give them a timestamp, you then have now taken away what the purpose of these characters were created and why they were created in the first place. They were created in the first place so they can outlive us. Uh, Ch uh, Chadwick Boseman played a character that was created in the height of the civil rights movement. A character that was created to bring hope and inspire in the black community. And I understand that, yes, you can go tell people, well, that character is still alive in the comics. If you really want those stories, go read the comics. But I shouldn't have to be told that. And the reason I shouldn't have to be told that is because if I want to go watch a Spider-Man movie, I can go watch No Way Home. I can go watch Homecoming. I can go watch Far From Home. I can go watch Civil War, where he also entered the MCU the exact same time as, as Black Panther. So then when I'm looking at that and I'm looking at how Spider-Man went on to have three films and a handful of cameos. And then if we're to believe the rumor is about to play a much more important role in the MCU moving forward towards Secret Wars and Avengers 5 and things like that. And I'm looking at that. I'm looking at how Black Panther entered the, the MCU the exact same time. And yes, again, the actor passed. But no one, no one in the recast crowd, when we were campaigning and still campaigning for this character to be back on screen, was screaming, Ryan Coogler, Disney and company, you better put Black Panther T'Challa in Wakanda Forever. Nobody was saying that. What we were saying was, don't kill the character. If you can't figure out a way to make it make sense in this movie then you can say anything. It's the MCU where we are watching a giant purple man go from planet to planet, universe to universe, looking for rocks that can rewrite reality and, and rewind time and things like We watched a group of misfits go around the galaxy with a fucking tree and a talking raccoon. So you can't tell me to suspend my belief in those moments and then expect me to, to, to bear down in reality with Black Panther. That was the first MCU film we ever sat and watched real life themes like 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 I'm not saying that there haven't been real life themes in the in other MCU movies. But where we actually watched a character die the exact same way that that that, that this man in real life passed away. And the last thing I'm going to say on it is William Hurt. William Hurt passed away after Chadwick did, obviously, but was set up to get ready to play Thunderbolt Ross. Or to, to play uh, the Red Hulk, obviously already playing Thunderbolt Ross, but to play the Red Hulk. Why wasn't the same consideration taken with William Hurt? And I say and some people might say, well, well, you can't say that because Thunderbolt Ross is not even the same type of on the. And I, I agree with you. He's not on the level of, of stardom or character that uh, that that uh, Black Panther is on. I'm not. That's not what I'm getting at. What I'm getting at is if you care so much about this person. Because that's the way Marvel put it. Like we, we they have just such a, a deep care and, and 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 love for Chadwick. But Chadwick entered the MCU in 2016 as the Black Panther. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Civil War first. Civil War was what year? I, I don't remember what year Civil War was. So somebody have to put it in there. But whatever. You know what year that was? He entered in in that year. William Hurt entered the MCU in 2008. So if you are then saying that, oh, we care so much about our actors and actresses and, and, and that this, 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 this person meant so much to us and played so, such a big uh, part uh, role in our, our, our hearts and over here at Marvel, then why then wasn't the same stamp put on William Hurt that you put on Chadwick Boseman? And the reason it wasn't put that way is simply because they had they now they did have stories and plans that they wanted to do with Chadwick Boseman, because if you look at the the uh, reign of Marvel story that they uh, that the book that they had come out, she talked about how um, uh, uh Tom Holland, Chadwick Boseman, and Brie Larson all sat in a circle talking about how they were going to be the futures of the MCU and their characters and this and this and that. So they had plans for him. They had plans. But they also had those plans for William Hurt's Red Hulk. So they weren't going to stop their plans. They could have, but they weren't going to rewrite their, their plans for, for Red Hulk, but then 
were okay with rewriting and deciding within seconds not to recast the character of Chadwick, or I'm sorry, of T'Challa. And I swear, the last thing I'm saying on it for real. You then again take away a character that was introduced for, not for purpose, not yes, for entertainment purposes, but for much bigger purposes than that. The character was introduced to the black community as a beacon of hope, a hero, a hero that, you know, the first black hero that ever looked like them, that wasn't a derivative character, that wasn't a side character. He was his own character, a character fluent in so many different languages, a character that uh, um, is a master in so many different martial arts styles, a character that is intelligent, and has so many different um, um uh, degrees and 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 went to so many different co- Ivy League college and just so many different things that 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 you put on T'Challa that make him this great character. He was a king of an uncolonized nation. He was not only the king of the uncolonized nation; he was its protector. And, and it's just you know you take all of that away when you take away that character. And I think some people don't understand it because they're like, well, I don't get it. You still have Wakanda. You still have the Black Panther. You still have all those strong black characters. But if you watch the interview of Chadwick Boseman when he's talking about all that, the last thing he says, but I'm the lead. That's what we care about. We care about the lead. Yes, Denai is great as Okoye. Yes, Winston is sure great as M'Baku. And, and everybody else is great in their character roles. But at the end of the day, when you pick up a Black Panther comic, it starts and ends with T'Challa. There is no, there's no debating that. And that's with any of these characters. So that was a long winded answer to that. But, but, but there were other options that, that Kugler could have, that Kugler could have done. There were other avenues that he could have taken besides, hey, let's kill this, this fictional character with this real man. Uh... Thank you, Derpy. Derpy said James Gunn is on stage talking about Superman. Thank you for the question. I like I, I do appreciate the question, though. Um, when we can have civilized conversations about that, about the recasting of T'Challa, I always am, am for that. I have a very good video live stream we're going to do here very soon about uh, recasting, though. Uh, let's see. Um Where was I? Uh, Geek Ledger said, I personally think if Black Panther 2 wasn't uh, wasn't going to recast, they should have made T'Challa Jr. T'Challa's son. I feel like that goes into the absent father stereotype. Right. Right. D. Sizzle said, uh, plus his take on Wakanda and not Atlanteans was terrible. Yes. I agree to that, too. Um, Antonio Film said, I thought Nate Moore was getting more of, of the hate. I assume Ryan didn't uh, give pushback. Um, yeah, quite, quite possibly so. I, I think that was a collective decision. I believe when Nate said that they talked about it, he said that was him, Ryan, in the room, and they all said within seconds, no, we're not going to recast him. Um, Ryan said, or Grand Richard Thrax said, uh, they're saying Ultraman's supposed to be in the Superman movie, so we're getting two Supermans in the movie, LOL. Okay, I was going to mention that too in the the little, um, uh, my off the top stuff. So this is what, now he could be lying, I don't know, but you know, James Gunn does spend a lot of his time online uh, debunking what fans have either deemed as going to happen in the film or as rumor or whatever. Uh, but he recently came out and said this, so I will read that. So this is what he said. Uh, somebody, he said, the primary the primary protagonist of Superman is shockingly Superman. The main villain of Superman is shockingly Lex Luthor. I don't know where all this stuff is coming from, and that's something other than this. There are so many stories coming out every day. It's difficult to deal with, and every time I strike something down, I'm giving I'm giving it attention. <laughs> so uh, so I'll say again. Don't believe anything unless you see it here. And why would you want to know any, everything before the movie comes out anyway? Does anybody know why he does that mermaid at the end of every fucking thing he says on Twitter? Um, so that's what he said about that. So seemingly Ultraman is not going to be in the uh, movie, uh, obviously. Um, actually, too... Um, who was it? Uh, uh, David Cornswit just recently did an interview talking about um, 
I'm gonna keep it here just for when that trailer drops. Still not up. Um, recently did an interview talking about what we can expect from Superman, um, and he said something like it was going to be. Uh, it's going to be like Superman Four Seasons. It's akin to Superman Four Seasons. Um, and Superman Four Seasons, for those of you that don't know, obviously takes place within the Four Seasons: uh, uh, winter, spring, summer, and fall of Superman's life. It takes a time jump at one point from when he's in high school to when he's in uh, at the, a reporter for um, um, the Daily Planet. Uh, so it uh, there's a uh, it's it's. He says it's kind of like that. So there's there's like elements from the uh, from that comic that they're leaning into. But I also thought that they were taking it away from uh, Kingdom Come as well. Um, that is also a rumor that they are taking some elements of Kingdom Come and putting that into the film. So I really don't know. Uh, I do like the fact, though. I do like one of the things that James Gunn said. You know, uh, why would we want to know everything? And as a as a YouTuber, I do want to know so I can you know kind of share and that's some things one of the things we do over here uh, for the plot leaks and things like that um for those that are interested we do share the leaks we do share the plots and things and when we learn them i know stamina is not ever interested in those but we do share those when we uh when we um we know them uh, but i do like the fact that we know next to nothing about superman right now um i would like to actually sit down in the film and be pleasantly surprised with whatever it's going to be i am anticipating superman for sure um so I have to wait to see exactly what this film is going to be about. Uh, let's see. Andre, I appreciate it. Everybody hit the like button like Andre was saying. Appreciate that. Kyle said, well, do you think that T'Challa will be recast in the new MCU? They have eventually, uh, they have to eventually cast the original T'Challa. <clears throat> and I, you know, I've said this before. I don't know. I think that Marvel Studios has gone a direction with T'Challa and Wakanda, um, and they have dug their heels in and made their bed, and I do believe they're going to lie in it. I don't think that they're going to change their minds, and I think with what I'm saying with that is what, they are done, what they've done so far with t the, the T'Challa, uh, they're going to keep that. That, that character is now going to be the T'Challa moving forward. And the stories, whatever stories they were going to do with T'Challa, they're just going to do with his son in place. I, 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 that's just what I believe. Now, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I am wrong. I hope that they do bring T'Challa back. I hope that he is going to be in Secret Wars and all of that stuff. And this could, you know, with whatever new new world is going to be formed from, from what we know in rumors. And we're going to get to these rumors in just a second. But what we know from rumors about Secret Wars, not rumors about Secret Wars, but from what we know about rumors for Secret Wars in general, is going to be, uh, after the events of Secret Wars, there's going to be a new constructed world from different, obviously, like kind of, kind of like in the comics, from different universe is put together to make the new world or whatever and so you could get a t'challa new wakanda or whatever i don't know i do i think that's what they're doing no um do i think that they are going to eventually at some point ever recast the main character of t'challa sure some point maybe way down the line is that anywhere in the future i don't think so i just don't now, again, I would love to be wrong, but Marvel has not shown me anything to where that, that indicates that they are going to recast this character at all. I mean, when you, it, it seems like they're doing everything to avoid the character. He's not in the game. I mean, obviously, I know that that game is based off the comic Flags of Our Fathers, you know, where it is T'Challa's grandfather. I, and I, st I understand that. He, but he's not in the... Why, why would we do a Black Panther game and not have it centered around T'Challa? Doesn't make sense. But anyway, game looks fine, looks fun, cool, great. We watched the trailer here. Um, but he's not in the game. Um, this new series, Eyes of Wakanda, I get that it is in continuity with the MCU. So with him being dead in the MCU, they have to make it fit within their story. But another something else is coming out in the Black Panther franchise that's not centered around Wakanda, Eyes of Wakanda. Uh, Black Panther 3 is not going to uh, involve T'Challa. It is going to involve T'Child. Um, so I just, it seems like they're doing everything right now in their power to stay away from T'Challa, to to duck and dodge him. And I don't, I don't, I don't know, I don't get it. It's the same reason you look at, watch, mark my words. We've all said it before. Pirates of the Caribbean 6 is going to fail. Is it 6? Yes. 6 is going to fail. 
And it's going to fail because of the absence of the franchise's main fucking character. As I've said before, I love Captain Barbosa. I think he is actually one of my favorite characters in the entire franchise. I love the supporting character that is uh, uh, Elizabeth. I love the supporting character that is Will. Um, everybody else, the the the, the crew, the 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 midget and the or the little person. I think that's what the politically correct the mid, the the little person, and then the. Uh, uh, the two pirates that are with Barbosa, the skinny one and the more heavy. Like, you know, you know these people, but at the end of the day, it's Captain Jack that is the interest. It's Captain Jack and his story and things like that. And not just Captain Jack, but it's it's Johnny. So I think, you know, not having uh not having the franchise's main character doesn't make sense to me. Uh, they're they're currently sitting talking about. Uh, I guess Peter Safran is presenting the first trailer for Superman: The Christopher Reeve Story. Would you watch it if it wasn't if Christopher Reeves wasn't in it? No, no, no. Now I understand. Obviously, this is just a story about Christopher Reeves, but uh, it's just it, it, you want you want the franchise's main character, so. Um, that's the full Superman logo reveal. Uh, it's been revealed at CinemaCon, very similar to the logo below. Um, oh, is this not it? Where is it? Oh, did they not reveal it? No, oh, okay. Maybe they didn't show it to the public like that. Okay, while we're still waiting on that trailer, we'll move to the next thing here. The next thing that we'll talk about is um, the Back to the Future reboot. So it looks like they are trying to do, J.J. Abrams actually is wanting to do a Back to the Future reboot. And this is an article from Giant Freaking Robot that I saw earlier that piqued my interest simply because I am a big Back to the Future fan. Um, I... I know a lot of people don't like the third one. I like the third one. I actually really love the second. I love all three of them. I think they're all brilliant. Um, Marty McFly, great character. Um, you know, there are so many things. When I used to watch the original Back to the Future, um, you know, the the or the second one, the second one, the skateboard, the hoverboard, the, the shoes that they came out with, those Nike shoes that, you know, they actually made, uh, all that, like, Back to the Future is a great franchise, in my opinion. Um, so I was really excited about this. And another reason I'm excited about it is because I've made it no secret. I've talked about it on Twitter. I've talked about it here. I'm a big Timothy Chalamet fan. I think Timothy Chalamet, uh, I think we are in the uh, generation of Chalamet right now. Um, and the reason I say that is because you look at just the, look at Chalamet's rise right now. What he's doing with Dune, he just, just had Dune was a box office success. Uh, uh, Wonka was a box office office success. Um, the first Dune, what he did with that. Um, if you look at his resume, I think King is a great movie. The Netflix film where he plays King Arthur, that's a great film. Uh, Call Me By Your Name, obviously a great film. Um, Lady Bird, he's great in it. Beautiful Boy, he's great in it. Um, Timothy Chalamet is a, in my opinion, uh, going to go on to define himself as one of this generation's greatest actors. And that's, I'm telling you now, it's going to happen. Um, and I think when you, you look at the most recent deal that he just did with Warner Brothers, that's kind of like, that's, that's, that's not something that a lot of studios really do anymore. It's something they used to do a lot back in the day. Um, with, you know, back in the golden days, I guess people like to say of Hollywood, it's not something a lot of studios really do anymore. But what they're for those of you that don't know, Timothy Chalamet signed a deal with Warner Brothers that he can make to basically be Warner Brothers, make all his films with Warner Brothers. Now, he can make other films with other studios, um, but he is basically signed to Warner Brothers. Uh, so he is going to. Uh, but as long as those other, as long as whatever film those other studios are doing don't con contradict or overlap with something that Warner Brothers is currently wanting to do with Chalamet, um, and I believe Warner Brothers does own the Back to the Future uh, franchise, I believe. So this is something that is uh, very real and very much in the works. Um, I don't know how exactly you know. I, I, I let me rephrase that. I was excited about it. But I don't know exactly how. 
I feel about the reboot is in itself, just because remakes are not always the best, and we we are witnesses of that uh, with a lot of the remakes that we've seen. Um, you know, I I did not like the Lion King remake. I did not. I don't like any of Disney's um, live action remakes outside of Jungle Book. Uh, all of their all of their live action remakes have been disappointments for me. But remakes could be great, could not be great. You really don't know. Uh, J.J. Abrams. Hit or miss sometimes. Hit or miss sometimes, for sure. Uh, but this is what Giant Freaking Robot had to say about it. And again, I am, I like Timmy, so this this could be pretty good. Uh, it says, producer and director J.J. Abrams has become Hollywood's go-to for nostalgia trips, and now he's been planning another one. This time, he's doing his own take on the back. To, see, that's that, that right there. That right there. It's it's that It's that type of language for me that takes me out of reboots. And I get it's a reboot. You're doing something, you know, you're rebooting it to be somewhat different than it was the original or whatever. I get that. Uh, but when you start using language like his own take, I, you know, obviously it could, it could be cool. But um, I don't know. I get I understand that that is what comes with reboots, though. And it says we've learned from our sources that Abrams is working on an as of yet untitled movie, which. Uh, while it won't exactly be a remake of the Back to the Future, uh, it won't be a, it won't be a remake of Back to the Future. It will be something of an ho- uh, homage. Okay, so not a remake, but a homage to it. Um, if you're looking for a comparison image, this new movie being Back to the Future, uh, this new movie, this new movie being Back to the Future, what the 2011 Abrams directed movie Super Eight is to Steven Spielberg's E.T. The Extraterrestrial. DTs are our details are sparse and uh, Abrams is remaining tight lipped about it. We don't know. We don't know that much like uh, oh, I'm sorry about being tight lipped about it. But what we do know that much like the Back to the Future, this film will be about a young man traveling through time to play the story of to play the story's Marty McFly style character. Uh, Abrams is looking to cast Timothy Chalamet. So it's not really Back to the Future. It's more so like um like I said, a homage to it, um, where it's going to be like Back to the Future, but not Back to the Future. Timothy Chalamet is currently in talks to lead the movie, but a deal's not done yet. After the after the wide success of of the Dune movies and the solid the solid success of uh, Willy Wonka last year, Sh- Chalamet is a hot commodity and not an easy get. If you're looking for which modern actor is most like Michael J. Fox, that's who it is. I couldn't think of this man's name earlier. Michael J. Fox in the 80s, uh, though it's hard to do better than Timothy Chalamet. So it's easy to understand why Abrams would want him. Notions of full-on Back to the Future remake have floated around Hollywood for years. Actually, that's what I was going to say. Michael J. Fox was asked about this recently, and I don't think he his answer was too uh, positive. I don't think he was like, oh, right, let's make a back... I think he was actually like... I think he said something about don't call him for the remake or something. Uh, Don't quote me on that, but I don't think he was too positive with it. Uh, He said, it's hard to do better than Chalamet, uh, blah, blah, blah. Notions, I read that part. Back to the Future creator Robert Zexman and Bob Gale have always been as adamantly against a remake as fans are okay so maybe that's why michael j fox was like don't call me the pair move the pair move to block remakes from happening every time someone attempts it uh, doing the super eight style homage seems like the best possible uh, workaround for hollywood execs execs eager to cash in on the goodwill moviegoers have have uh have for back to the future at the same time it could be a nice way to slip back into the genre for fans who would revolt against a remake but likely will enjoy a good homage okay so that's kind of what i was saying there at the beginning um how i was like i don't like the language around it and how we're saying it's going to make it his but if it's a homage and it's not an actual um remake of back to the future then maybe that's not that bad. Um, I don't know exactly, though, what... Sorry, something popped up. Okay, I don't know exactly, though, what um, what the film would, you know... If it's not Back to the Future, I guess it's just going to be time-traveling, um, mischief stuff like... Michael J. Fox got into as Marty McFly, uh, but I do want to exactly see what Michael J. Fox said because it was something like did that trailer drop. It was something like uh, 
Don't call me. There it is. There's the uh, logo. According to people currently at CinemaCon, they showed off the full Superman logo and they said, it oh, it looks similar to this one. So it's not that one. It looks similar to that one. But we already kind of knew that. I thought that that was something that was shared a couple weeks ago. Um, let me see. Okay, so Fox says back to the... Yeah, this was last year. Okay, I thought it was recent. Fox said back to the future reboot does not need to exist, but do what you want. I got... Yeah, that's what it was. But do what you want. I got paid already. That's what he said. It wasn't don't call me. Basically, don't call me. Do what you want. I've already gotten paid. So, um, yeah, I do... Neither one of them, I don't think Christopher Lloyd or Michael J. Fox will be involved in this as it is not a remake. So I don't know that their characters would need to be in this. Uh, but, you know, what do you think? Are you interested in a Back to the Future homage, um, you know, in that same style, time traveling with Timothy Chalamet? I think it could be uh, interesting, um, but we'll definitely keep covering whatever's coming out. I do believe that it's a film that they're going to do, though, uh, because, like I said, this is going to be under Warner Brothers. He just signed that contract with Warner Brothers. Um, it's something that's been on the minds of Hollywood for a while of wanting to do a remake to Back to the Future. So uh, this is something that could be very real, but we will cover it if it is. But you guys let me know if you were fans of the original Back to the Future or um, if you would be interested in what they are currently doing with this. Maybe by the time I actually get down to the trailer or the conversation of um, Joker, it will be out because I've only got this and Fantastic Four left um, before that trailer. Let's see. Yeah, John Favreau's Jungle Book was solid. D-Sizzle said that was great. I thought that was a good one. Andre says, as long as Michael J. Fox has a role in it somewhere, yes, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but we'll move here. Let's move to the next topic. The next topic is Deadpool. So let's talk Deadpool. Now, we've talked Deadpool in the past, a lot in the past, and um, especially with anticipation of the film dropping July 20, what, 6th? July 26th, I'll be seeing it on the 25th, uh, possibly again on the 26th, it just depends. Um, but Deadpool is something that is the most anticipated film. I think there was a poll taken. It's the most anticipated film of the year. Um, it is Marvel Studios' only film of the year, um, and it is supposed to be a pivotal film in the Marvel Studios timeline. We have gotten our first trailer, so we already knew some of the things that happened in that trailer. We were we were privy to before the trailer dropped just from leaks and rumors. We knew that it was going to involve the TVA. We knew that it was at one point thought it was going to involve the Danger Room and some other stuff and maybe even Mojo. But that all got changed. Um, I've even heard, you know, from other scoopers that at one point the script was going to involve nothing but the um uh, the, told, the whole plot of the film is going to take place around the first X-Men film and that timeline and that whole era. Uh, but that even got changed. Um, most recently, we read an article from Alex Perez where he was doing a Q&A, and Alex Perez is the scooper insider over at Cosmic Circus, where he was talking about um, how Deadpool is going to... Uh, I don't remember exactly what he said about... Um, um, what he said in that article, I don't remember everything he said, but in the past, Alex has uh, talked about how 838 Universe was going to be involved with this. We even heard, I don't know if you guys remember all of this, but we were supposed to have a fight between the Phoenix and Wanda, uh, Jean Grey's Phoenix and uh, 838's Wanda. Um, there was a whole bunch of different rumors for Deadpool uh, and Wolverine. Um, but most recently... And I've said I, I said this I, I said this when I sat over there. It was the last time I think all three of us were in the studio, and I said, "But what if Deadpool isn't what we all want it to be? What if it isn't this?" You know, my Matthew Vaughn, director Matthew Vaughn, came out and said he saw a clip of Deadpool, and he said it is the film that is going to save the MCU. You even hear 
Wade Wilson in the co- in the trailer say he's Marvel Jesus. So we don't know if this film, I've, I've said before, even when Matthew Vaughn said that, I said, no, Deadpool's not the film that saves the MCU. And the reason I said that is because I said, we all know going into Deadpool that we are going to enjoy and have a good time with Deadpool. Temper your expectations. I'll get back to that in just a second. That we're all going to have a good time with Deadpool. So Deadpool is not the film to save the MCU. If you're looking at a film to save the MCU, in my opinion, that's going to be your Captain America 4 which is still under some muddy, murky fucking what-the-shit water are they doing over there. You've still got Fantastic Four coming out in 2025. To my, in my opinion, I think Mar- that's one that Marvel is handling very well. You look at the current marketing for, for uh, F4. I understand that a lot of people don't like the fact that Julia Garner's playing that, but understand if you were not here last week when that rumor dropped that she is not playing the main Silver Surfer in our 616 universe. Marvel also dropped a poster of the Human Torch of... Uh, 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 Quinn playing the Human Torch as Johnny. And in the background of where the Human Torch was, that is not our 616 universe. We actually got even more details about it, that their universe is going to be a more futurized 60s version, where they are from, the future is the 60s, 60s version of, the, of, of New York, but a, a more futurized version of it. Um... So we, we you know, we, we've got, we, we learned all those things about Kind of, kind of, with the Fantastic Four and things like that, and what was going to be, or what was going to be going on within um, uh, that film. I'll get back to that in just a second. But um, those, those type of films, to, in my opinion, are going to be the films that save the MCU uh, if they, if the, if if they are able to do that um, or put. Let me, let me put it, let me put it this way. I don't want to say save the MCU, but put fans back on a traject, a trajectory of trusting the MCU of of saying, okay take my money Marvel or, or whatever because it used to be a for me it used to be a thing where I would always say oh no 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 Marvel's about to do it again oh no 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 Marvel's about to do it again but now it's like uh, is Marvel are they going to do it again so you know you don't really know so uh, I don't think Deadpool's that film that's going to do that but um somebody most recently asked Alex Perez now this is this is a few days after Alex just put out that Q&A where he was saying something completely different about um Deadpool now I don't want to sit here and you know dog Alex because I think that Alex is a a, a good scooper we've covered several different things that Alex has put out in the past um but like I always say with all these scoopers, take everything that even they say and things that we repeat echo chamber over here as far as uh, sharing those um, rumors or leaks with you. Take it with a massive grain of salt. We don't know that any of things, any of these things are true. A lot of this, a lot of the stuff that these scoopers say is a game of telephone where you might hear one person say something and then the next time somebody else says it, different words have been changed by the time it finally gets out. This person's now this person's been cast as this person. I've heard it from this person who has a reliable source that this person told me. So you don't, you know, we never really know with these scoopers. Now, obviously, Daniel has had some good scoops. My time has had some good scoops. Can we get some toast? Good scoops. Alex, good scoops. But they've also had shit scoops as well. My Time to Shine Hello, if you don't remember, it wasn't just My Time to Shine Hello. It was My Time to Shine Hello. Can we get some toast? A a lot of them were all collaborating and saying that, hey, the Spider-Man from the, I I guess the Spectacular Spider-Man, whichever one is voiced by Keaton or whoever, was going to be the one, the Spider-Man that shows up in Invincible in the finale. That didn't fucking happen. That wasn't, that wasn't, uh, that Spider-Man in the finale, but they said it was going to be that Spider-Man, not the not the off-brand Spider-Man that we got from the Invincible comics. It was going to be that specific Spider-Man. So they're not always spot on with things that they say. I don't know where that came from. Um, they also said that Batman was was going to be in the uh, in in um, Invincible, and some people might say, "Oh, oh but Darius, they were right about that." No, 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 they weren't. Uh, that was not Batman. Uh, Kirkman, who who wrote the Invincible comics, came out and said, "No, that wasn't Batman in the in the." Uh, Obviously, they leave it ambiguous to make you think it is Batman, but that's not Batman. So just, you know, a lot of the things that the scoopers say sometimes can be on. Sometimes it cannot be on. But Alex Perez most recently on Twitter was asked or somebody said to him, and I will read it, said, I really hope this is true to where he says, I don't know. I don't know what they were saying, what they hope was true. But he said, I really hope this is true. I miss Nightcrawler. I want Alan back so bad. But if he doesn't return, I hope Cody will cameo. 
and he was talking about and the a- Adam is the Adam is the actor that plays Nightcrawler in the original X Men films. Cody plays him in the reboot that Fox did. Um, uh, Cody will cameo in Deadpool and Wolverine instead. I just need to see one of the Fox Nightcrawlers one more time. To where Alex Perez commented this. Now, before I read what Alex said, mind you, every scooper. Everybody since Deadpool has been announced has been talking about how we are going to see this. And again, take it with I know this is partly our our, our fault to our fault as well as fans. And the reason I say it's our fault as fans is because not all of us, not all of us. I know some of you don't pay attention to the leaks and rumors like that. You like to be surprised or you don't believe some of the things that you see. But as someone like me who is in this YouTube game and I it, I cover a lot of this stuff and we talk about this stuff live, I do cling on to some of those things that they say. Um, and when they say things like, um, you know, oh, we're supposed to be seeing this X-Men, you know, let me put it this way. One of the exact quotes that one of these scoopers used was, it's going to be an X-Men filled film. You guys are going to see so many X-Men in the film. It's going to be this person, that person, this cameo, that cameo. We heard the Fantastic Four, the OG Fox Fantastic Four, was supposed to appear in the film. With That's Jessica Alba's crew. Uh, we heard that Elektra, uh, Jennifer Gardner, is supposed to be reprising her role. I still believe that's happening. Um, we've heard so many different things or whatever, whatever, whatever. Cassandra Nova is going to still be the main villain as, as she was supposed to be. Um, 70 or something, 75% of the film is going to take place within the void. Um, those are things that we do know that are actually going to happen. Uh, but there were so many things that were put out about Deadpool that really hyped up Deadpool to be this next No Way Home or to be even better than No Way Home was. And I know some people might even say, well, No Way Home wasn't even that great for me. I personally had a fucking great time in No Way Home, me personally. Um, but Deadpool, we don't know. Again, we have to wait to see. But this is what Alex Perez had to say back to that. He said, yeah, with three dots. So if you're expecting a whole X-Men cast reunion for Deadpool 3, lower your expectations all the way down to avoid disappointment. What was originally established is no longer coming to fruition. There's still cool stuff, but my recommendation is relax by a lot in all caps locks. Based on what I've heard, the story flows better for the overall multiversal saga, leading to Secret Wars, but it's not going to be in-game level cameo bonanza people are expecting this to be. It's more like No Way Home. Now, again, as I just said, I enjoyed No Way Home. So for me, that's not that bad of an idea for me. But again, this is why I said what I said when we last talked about Deadpool. But what if it's not? What if it's not what we're all expecting Deadpool to be? What if Deadpool is not going to be the film that saves? And again, I never thought it was, but just using what Matthew, Matthew Vaughn's quote and what everybody else is jumping on the Deadpool train thinking it's going to do. What if it doesn't save the MCU? What if, what if it doesn't do this? What if it doesn't do that? And now those what ifs are becoming realities. Because I remember when I said that, so many people, there were people in the chat saying, oh, no, don't say that. It's going to be great. I think even Corey even might have said, oh, no, no, I, I have so much faith and hope in Deadpool and I do too I have faith and hope in Deadpool because it's Ryan Reynolds and Ryan Reynolds said he wasn't going to do Deadpool uh, 3 if it wasn't going to be able if he wasn't going to be able to do it the way he did it under Fo- under the Fox umbrella and obviously when we watch the first trailer and the, one of the first things you hear come out of Wade Wilson's mouth is pegging might be new for you or might be new for Disney but it's not for me or whatever he said obviously we know that it's going to be in the same vein that you know the other Deadpools were in it's Marvel's first rated R film etc 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 but again there is that but what if it's not what if you leave Deadpool disappointed what if you leave Deadpool and you're like okay this is still not it um again do I think that that is going to happen I don't I still think Deadpool is going to be one of the best films of the year I think it's still going to be one of Marvel's best films and things like that but knowing this now it's kind of like MJ says in the MCU if you expect disappointment you never have to be disappointed and I feel like that's where we currently are with Marvel Studios projects if you just expect disappointment and I know that's hard that's hard because some of us might be really, really you know really be still clinging on to that hope of Marvel's coming back that lightning in a bottle we we need Marvel back and I still believe Marvel is going to make their little comeback 
But if you expect disappointment, you never have to be disappointed. And I think it, with every Marvel project, until until there has been some type of light shown to us that they're moving down a different path or something, then you have to expect disappointment. And you have to expect that Marvel may they may not be what I wanted Deadpool 3 to be. It may not be what I want, you know, any of the projects moving forward to be. But um, if you expect disappointment, again, you don't have to be disappointed. So don't go in <laughs> like we were all. And I again, I'm guilty. I have been over here hype and I'm still going to hype Deadpool up. But I've been over here hyping Deadpool up, saying, oh, we're going to see this, we're going to see that. And I've just been going based off of what we hear in leaks and rumors. And again, I hold so tight to those because most of the time those leaks and rumors um, are spot on. I mean, we were we read the plot leak for the Marvels. It happened. We read the plot leak for Wakanda Forever. It happened. We read the plot leak for Quantumania. It happened. You know, so um, sometimes they're on, sometimes they're off. We don't know. Um, but that is the current rumors and situations going on with Deadpool uh lower your expectations and relax by a lot quoted by uh, Alex Perez over the Cosmic Circus so don't expect to go in and see the smorgasbord of X-Men in this film i think we'll still see our dazzler and taylor swift i think i think we'll still see beast because i think that uh, monica in some way shape or form is going to play a role in a post credit scene or something like that or those x-men or whatever um just from what we've heard, again, grain of salt, grain of salt. Um, I, you know, there's, there's still major things going to be happening within Deadpool. We'll just have to wait to see what it is. Um, the last thing that we do know is that um, at CinemaCon on the 11th, so that's not today, that is going to be on Wednesday. I'm sorry, Thursday. On Thursday, the 11th, Deadpool and Wolverine is going to get a sneak peek at CinemaCon. Now, is that going to be, sh and that's coming via Daniel RPK, grain of salt. Is that going to be shown to us? I don't know. Uh, is that going, and that's something that he says too, is that going to be in the public, uh, something that the public's going to see? I'm not sure. Not really sure if that's something that we're going to see um, shared with us from CinemaCon. But I do want to show one more thing here before we uh, move on from Deadpool. Um, and that is, what Alex said here, uh, hold on, hold on, let me find it. So the runtime for uh, Deadpool is going to be two hours and ten minutes. That was reported by Can We Get Some Toast. Is that probably a true statement? Yeah, probably. I, You know, stuff like that I, I don't have a hard time believing. So, yeah, that is probably a true statement that the runtime for the film is going to be two hours and ten minutes. Um, we know this one, too. You know, this is probably something that is real just because the image did drop of, you know, Deadpool with the katanas, where they went on to say not only does the TVA uh, tailor whip up a new suit for Deadpool, he also gives him with adamantium katanas to level the playing field okay i i do believe that too i believe that that is something that probably is actually true um i mean you see him with the katanas here you see him with the katanas in the uh the other pictures and then this one says new promotion art of deadpool and wolverine also fe featuring dog dog pool kid pool head pool and baby pool uh now the scoopers can we get some toast now he can we get some toast this is this is again what i mean now he at one point this could have been on the table at another point now it's off the table. Can we get some toast? Was one of those scoopers that reported that Walker uh, Scobell was going to be playing Kidpool in the Deadpool uh, three and Deadpool three. Now three day as of three days ago, can we get some toast? Says Kidpool will not be played by Walker Scobell, and we all thought that that was really real because of his already pre-established relationship with Ryan Reynolds. Uh, they did the Adam Project together, so um, and he already works for Disney and the Percy and Jackson. Uh, series so we all thought that that was kind of you know inevitable that that was real he was going to do that um not happening um hold on i need to find this last thing here okay right here so this is where alex said temper your expectations now just looking at this here this is what a commenter said uh, this is somebody from reddit who said leak culture has changed so much the past few years. When I first started following this sub a few years ago, I swear whether they were bullshit or not, leaks would be actual information. This person is being considered for a role. This character is, is going to appear in this film. 
now they post riddles and pictures and they say they have information but don't share it then a few months then a few months before the project comes out they say stuff like changed changed and uh, any actual information they shared might not be true I assume all leaks are fake so it doesn't matter much to me I have no clue what to expect from this film I'm still shocked slash delighted Cassandra Nova is the main villain not only that I think I mentioned this the last time too there are scoopers like can we get some toast that are making people well not making people people are dumb enough to do it that are paying for scoops people that are um you know uh paying to get a scoop first when that same scoop is going to come out later that day so but can we get some toast is one of those one of those scoopers somebody went on to say lower your expectation said the guy who said this was 838 invading earth again this you know, Alex did. Alex was one of the ones that said that, you know, oh, no, we're going to see this. This universe is going to be 838 or whatever. It's 838 was going to be involved um, in this universe in some type of way. I think they were going to go to war with them or something like that. I don't remember exactly what the rumor was. It was a while ago. Um, somebody said this dude needs to stop yapping. Honestly, he's clear. Uh, he clearly got. Uh, sources, but ends up looking dumb because he doesn't know when to zip it, leading to this. So it just goes on and on. Um, um, someone said, was the whole X-Men cast reunion expected? Uh, and then this person said, Cyclops, Jean Grey, Storm, Gambit were, uh, were scooped by multiple people. Now, this is, again, Cyclops obviously being played by James Marsden. We know that that's happening. I believe that James Marsden is actually going to be in it. James Marsden recently just did an interview where he talk they talked about deadpool but not really but um oh god what did he say he gave off the impression that he wanted the interviewer to ask him more about deadpool like that he was more upset that damn why didn't you ask me about because i he seemed, he seemed like he really wanted to talk about it so we know james morrison is going to reprise his role as, as cyclops um i forget the actress that plays gene gray but she was mentioned to reprise her role as well um Halle Berry posted a picture of her with the short hair, um, which led to everybody thinking, oh, she's, you know, she's filming for Deadpool. She's reprising her role as well. Uh, we've talked many times about how Channing Tatum was supposed to play Gambit in a Fox Gambit a solo film and how he really was ready for that film. He really loves this character. He really wants to play Gambit. So just as a homage to or, or paying, you know, some type, not homage, but giving giving some type of um, uh, closure to Channing Tatum, letting him come back and play Gambit in this film. Uh, Kelsey Grammer as Beast. Um, teenage Negas TJ Negasonic Warhead is supposed to be in it, uh, obviously reprising her role, Colossus, things like that, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Professor X, Magneto. All scooped by Alex. So, um, and not just all scooped by Alex, others too. My time has talked about it. Can we get some toes? Talked about it. The Geekster talked about it. They've all talked about these things. So, um, but it just, uh, Goes on to say, and this is the last one I'll read. Somebody said, unbelievable. Alex is already backtracking. Like, can we get some toast in my time to shine? Hello. First, they promise way ahead a lot of stuff that were never going to be in the movie. Then when we get close, they start backtracking by saying they changed their minds and last minute the project, their credibility, uh, to project their credibility. Uh, go until the end with your information. Don't backtrack. Uh Face responsibility for what you said. That's the real. That's how the real world works. I think that's taking it a little bit too deep because uh, it's just scoops and things like that for a fantasy movie. But at the end of the day, people are upset with the fact that you know we're being told one thing in these scoops and then being told another thing. But it then it then kind of takes your mind back to what James Gunn said uh, about the Ultraman stuff. Why would you want to know what's going to happen in the film anyway? Again, as a YouTuber and a content creator. Some t most of the time, I do want to know some of these things so that we can talk about it. it. It causes discussion for us here. But at the end of the day, as a fan that wants to just sit down and watch the movie without knowing, honestly, when I know stuff about the film, it doesn't ruin it for me anyway. Um, when I watched Black Adam, I knew Superman was going to show up at the end. I actually saw the post credit scene before I sat down in the theater. But my reaction at the theater would have made you think that I didn't know what the fuck was going on. Uh, because it's, it's more real to me when I watch it on the big screen. Yeah, I can read about it. Yeah, I can see it. I said this about Wakanda for Never. Yeah, I saw the post credit scene of Wakanda for Never before I saw that movie. And after seeing that post credit scene, I told, I told you guys. I saw that and I said, I don't have to now see the movie because I know where they're going. I don't need to see this. But when I saw it on screen, opposed to a dark image or, or blurry video on my phone, it made it more real. Uh, so 
Yeah, you know, we'll have to just wait and see exactly what Deadpool is going to be. Um, I still think it's going to be a great film. I'm not sitting here saying that it's going to be a dead, uh, a terrible film at all. That's not what I think. I don't think that. I could be wrong. I don't think that, though. I'll find out July 5th. But I said all that to say, temper your expectations going into Deadpool 3. Don't go into Deadpool 3 thinking that it's going to be this X-Men reunion like I thought. You know, I thought we were going to see so many X-Men because that's what we were being told from scoopers and things like that. And that's what the stories that a lot of us were running with as far as content creators go. We were running with those stories, telling those different stories on our platforms and saying, hey, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. Does it make fun conversation? Of course it makes fun conversation. But at the end of the day, temper your expectations. A lot of these things may not happen. A lot of these characters that you want to see may not be in the film. The X-Men and the what, however we want the X-Men to be still may not happen. If you go back to the article that was put out in the Production Weekly magazine a couple last week, the X-Men film has still lined up with what Scoopers have said, too. Again, this is why I say sometimes they're right. Scoopers have been saying that the X-Men film is not going to come after until after Secret Wars. Production Weekly's article kind of confirmed that it's going to come in quarter four, which is still after Secret Wars. So let me know what you guys think. Down below in the comments, do you think that uh, – do you pay attention to scoops? Let's put it that way. Are you one of those people on Twitter that pays attention to the scoops? Do you do you care for when we give spoilers and scoops and things like that? Are you an into leak culture or not? Do you just think it should all shut up? What do you think about the, the scoopers like my time? Can we get some toes? Daniel, Jeff Snyder, all of them, all the ones out there. Um, and then what do you think Deadpool is going to be? I know Raymond has said many times he doesn't think Deadpool is going to be that great of a film. But is he on to something? Does you, do you think that maybe it's not going to be that great of a film? Or are you like, hey, I'm just ready for Deadpool 3. I'm ready to see what Ryan Reynolds does in the MCU. And I'm ready for the first MCU rated R film. Let me know all your thoughts down below. Let's see what you guys got to say. Um, Stamina said, oh, Raymond said, that's a poss possibility people need to consider, cautiously consider. Mm -hmm. uh, Stamina said, appreciate you being here. Uh, Jean Grey in 838 Wanda, the non-Scarlet Witch Wanda. Jean Solo's regular Wanda. Uh, but there was more to that rumor. They were supposed to lobot. They were so so. Some of the some of the rumors for Multiverse of Madness was that they were going to lobotomize the 838 Wanda um, in Multiverse of Madness. So take uh, I'll, for those that don't know, in Multiverse of Madness. Um, it wasn't Ian McKellen. It might have been Ian McKellen, but I thought I thought they said it was going to be uh, who else plays Magneto? Um, God, my my brain today on names. I forget his name. Uh, the uh, younger actor that plays Magneto. I can't remember which of them it was going to be, but one of them was going to be Magneto in the A three eight universe, to where the um, Illuminati was going to go to, um, um. Magneto and say, you know, tell them what was going on. To, they needed, they, they needed to lobotomize Wanda. Uh, and forgive me, this is an old rumor, an old leak from the Multiverse of Madness day. So if it's not spot on, it doesn't sound. You probably that's probably why it got taken out. Um, but they were going to lobotomize Wanda, use Wanda in some type of way. So that plot got moved over from what we heard, grain of salt, to Deadpool. To where they were going to lobotomize the 838 Wanda and there was going to be some big ass fight between her and uh, the Phoenix. But no, you are absolutely correct. Uh, the Phoenix, Jean Grey, solos her without even really doing much uh, if it is, you know, not Scarlet Witch Wanda. Um, D. Sizzle said the massive success of Spider-Man No Way Home would have saved the MCU post Endgame if that was possible, but it didn't. That's true, too. D. Sizzle said... Um, uh, Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness missed opportunities, didn't either. Yep, very missed opportunities with Multiverse of Madness. Uh, Grand Ranger Thrag said, I'm not worried. Deadpool is trash. Are you not a fan of the uh, first? Uh, so they're talking about Beetlejuice now, I see. Okay. Are you not a fan of the first, um, what they say, first trailer for Joker 2 releases in an hour? What? That was six minutes ago. I thought they said that shit was... Maybe that's not my time. Okay. Um, 
Uh, let's see. Uh, Anna said, hi, have you shown the trailer yet? No, it hasn't. Not, not, not yet. Um, it's not out yet. So I, so for those of you that just heard me say that, it looks like an hour before we get that. I guess Hollywood time, like T. Stizzle said. Um, Stamina said, I'm on the edge of my, oh, talking to Gray. Uh, Gray said, and and came from Sony. Oh, I was talking to D-Sizzle. Okay, conversations. D-Sizzle said, I think I'll watch. Um, I know what that is. Uh. <laughs> why do I, why am I blanking today? A-T, A-T-S, I know what that is. Oh, Across the Spider-Verse. God, damn. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, Fastbender. Fastbender. Thank you. I can't remember if it was Fastbender or McKellen. Raymond said, I don't pay attention to leaks anymore. I want to go to the movie blind and excited and surprised and thrilled again. Yeah. Um, so the next thing we'll get to, since we're still waiting on that, because that this is my last topic before Joker, because Joker was my last topic, because I assumed, hey, the trailer's going to drop while I'm streaming, but here we are. Um, let's talk Fantastic Four. We talked Fantastic Four last week. We'll talk Fantastic Four again, and we're going to continue to talk Fantastic Four as it continues to get closer and closer to uh, the film. Um, but. Murphy's Multiverse. This is coming from Charles Murphy. Now, Charles Murphy is another scooper insider. Um, Charles stays out of a lot of the drama from what I've seen on Twitter a lot. He'll stay. Sometimes Charles can be an asshole from what I've seen in his replies, but he'll stay out of the drama a lot. Um, but. He most recently did a article here on some of the rumor uh, things going on with Fantastic Four. So this most recently dropped, I think it was this morning. Now, I don't want to sit here and say that we're, anybody should be surprised by this. Again, if you have been subscribed to this channel or any other channel that has been covering some of these things with the Fantastic Four or any Marvel projects in general, we talked about how Franklin and Valeria are going to be in the film. This was prior, way prior to last week's or a week a week and a half ago's news people talking about oh the twin uh, the the uh, not the twins uh franklin and valeria are going to be in the film yeah that's not news uh we knew that franklin and valeria are going to be in the film but what uh, this is news uh franklin richards will reportedly play an integral role now let me stop there because last week i did say don't expect franklin uh, to be raising Galactus from the dead and 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 uh, making Galactus his herald or anything like that, you know, I I've, I said I feel like they're probably not going to be really realized into their powers yet and things like that. I might have been wrong. I might have been wrong. Uh, Franklin Richards will reportedly play an integral role in the Fantastic Four. There will reportedly be some sort of connection between Franklin and Galactus in the film. Now, obviously. That's not like a okay. That's not groundbreaking because there's a connection between Franklin and Galactus in Marvel Comics. But um, what that I don't know what they mean by that. When I say that, I just don't know if we're going how if he's going to be born in the film. He's still going to be very young unless we time jump in some way. Um, but I thought that they did say that. I thought they said that the Fantastic Four at some point is going to time jump. There's going to be split. We're going to see things from the past and things from the future. That's right. They did say that. Uh, we're going to see things from the past and the future taking place within the uh, uh, within the Fantastic Four film. Uh, so maybe in the past he's born in space because that's what they said. The, the, the leaks or rumors said that he's supposed to be born in space. So maybe in the past he's born in space and we see a future version. Because we're supposed to see two attacks from Galactus. The because they, they already know Galactus, they've already fought Galactus from what we know. They've already fought Galactus so far. Again, grain of salt, but they've already fought Galactus. So we're supposed to see a past fight with Galactus and then the future fight with Galactus where it doesn't turn out so well. Um, so maybe, maybe Franklin is older. Um, maybe that can, and maybe he does. He's fully realized into his powers and uh, whatever the connection is with him and with him and uh, Galactus, um, it's going to be somewhat foreshadowed and talked about within the film. Um, 
NASA, or not NASA, sorry. Uh, they also just did this most recent um, kind of tease for it. Uh, the, uh, it says NASA captures mysterious image of surfboard orbiting the moon. Just more marketing for uh, the Fantastic Four. Um, and then I'll also show this. Um, Kevin Feige, this is what Kevin Feige said back in 2019 about the uh, Fantastic Four. All the stuff we did today? Teaser. I just said we didn't have time to talk about it. Yeah, so um, if you also recall, he did say a while back that uh, he wanted um, to put um, a different spin on Marvel's first family that hadn't been done before. He, you know, not a, I don't want to say that. He didn't say different spin. I don't want to scare people. Um, he said, uh, a different take, a different uh, uh, something that we haven't. I guess that is the same thing as a different spin. Uh, just a, a way that we haven't. It's not an origin story is what he was basically getting at. It's not going to be an origin story. We've already seen the origin story. We know they go to space. They get their powers. Damn, we don't need to see that again. Uh, so it's not going to be an origin story. Uh, but what Charles had to say on some of this was uh, – for a film that hasn't even begun principal photography, Marvel Studios' Fantastic Four is certainly generating a lot of hype. And I, for one, am actually somewhat really. It's on my most. It's on my. It's on one of my most anticipated list films for 2025. I do want to see this a bit more. If you would have asked me a couple months ago, I think I said Superman, but I do want to see this now a bit more than I want to see Superman. Um, Says, uh, known for typically keeping secrets locked up tightly until big events, the studio has been uncharacteristically forthcoming with information about the film. Uh, using social media to drive interest in the project, first it was the Valentine's Day reveal for the cast uh, through some stylized concept art, new title, and new release date. And what we also know is the that Valentine's Day post, those uniforms are going to be the Fantastic Four's uh, uniforms, their, cost, their suits. So those are going to be the suits they suit up in in the film. Uh, then it goes on to say, um, and then on April 4th, another piece of concept art was shared along with a link to Marvel.com that ultimately uh, landed fans on a page created by the Future Foundation. Uh, the page contained links. This is what we were talking about last week. Uh, the page contained links to the five Marvel comics that fans have probably right, rightly concluded um, uh, concluded concluded have had some level of influence on the on the plot of the 2025 film. And then, of course, scoopers and leakers have been scooping and leaking, uh, and much of what they much of what they have had to share lately has led to some interesting discussions at all uh, discussions at all the usual place in all the usual places. Uh, what's the latest buzz? What's real and what's bullshit? Let's take a look. Okay, so this is the alternate universe. Um, going on to say that that's real. Uh, the most notable rumor making the ru making the rounds is that Marvel Studios Fantastic Four will be set in a universe other than the MCU's version of Six One Six. To be totally fair, given what Marvel Studios has provided for fans to look over, uh, no insider access is necessary to come to that conclusion. Both the original cast photo and new concept art of Human Torch provide plenty of interesting uh, uh, inferences um, that the film is set in else set in elsewhere in the multiverse. The Valentine's Day artwork, which was used to announce the cast, made it clear that the first family was actively uh, was active during the 1960s. There's a lot we don't know about that part of the MCU, but it's almost impossible to imagine what sort of horrific retcon director Matt Shackman and the films uh, and the film's team of writers would have had to fabricate in order to explain how nobody in the MCU 616 knows who Marvel, who the Fantastic Four are. And I know a lot of people were asking that before we found out it was going to be in a different universe. People were saying, well, so the Fantastic Four have just been around this whole time and not helping, and they've been here since the 60s. Not the Eternals, very different. I still hate that with the Eternals, but not the Eternals, very different. Um, they're in a, multi a different uh, universe. 
Uh, it goes on to say, uh, while there while there were still potential arguments to be made, after all, Doctor Strange Doctor Strange made everyone forget Peter Parker. Uh, the retro futuristic city in the background of the Happy Four Four Day poster really erases or really uh, erases any doubt that the Fantastic Four will take place in an alternate universe. Uh, what's more. What's more interesting, though, is that the retrofuturistic city also sort of implies that Doctor, that Doctor Reed Richards and the future found and his future foundation have had a profound impact on the Earth they inhabit. Honestly, it's interesting that they fu- that the future foundation exists at all on this new Earth because it implies that Reed has done has done an uh, admirable job of solving everything, which makes more which makes one wonder if this Reed variant is so intelligent that he becomes aware of the multiverse that he has become aware of the multiverse and has built the bridge uh, and has built the bridge and has met other Reeds. Now we've talked about this. I think that. I do think that. I do think that this read is obviously because this read is going to be our main MCU read, which makes him the 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 read, obviously. So, you know, it's just like in Marvel Comics, 616 heroes are the best of them. And even in the MCU, our world's heroes are the best of them. So this is going this read is going to be the best of the best of them. But we've talked about all the casting rumors that they had for Reed, Adam Driver, Dave Patel, um, all the others, all the others, um, Penn Badgley, uh, all of them. I don't really know if they're really going to do a Council of Reeds, if they're going to be able to pull that off and have all those people come back as and playing Reed Richards, um, even the OG guy that played Reed in the uh, original Fox films. I don't know. But the Council of Reeds is something that has been on everyone's minds. We've talked about that, talked about them possibly doing a Council of Reeds and us seeing that within the MCU. I do believe it's something that they do want to attempt to do. So I, I strongly believe that he probably has built a bridge and met other other Reeds. It says, whether Reed has knowledge of the multiverse or not, the audience the audience certainly does. Uh, beginning with Avengers Endgame and continuing throughout several multiversal saga projects, Loki, Spider-Man No Way Home, Doctor Strange, the Multiverse of Madness, the Marvels, and What If, Marvel Studios has opened the floodgates to the multiverse. Uh, to the multiverse, Mom alone introduced over a dozen new u- no, it didn't a dozen new universes. Uh, so when the Fantastic so when is the Fantastic Four set? Definitely not in the six one six, and definitely not Earth three. 3- 838 because the universe read wasn't so smart as it turns out as that universe's read wasn't so smart as it turns out as much as fans might want to see uh, the film set in a familiar universe or at least one that's been seen on screen before the, before that really doesn't make sense from a storytelling perspective any known universe would would come to pre-existing um, limitations not not matter or no matter how small uh, sorry, binary and beast universe to open it up, to open it up to truly uh, unlimited creative creatively and potential. Uh, uh, the story would simply just the story would simply just have to be set in a universe that has previously not been seen. No muss, no fuss. Franklin Richards and Galactus. Um, one of the more interesting rumors to follow Marvel Studios new, news this last week is that Reed and Sue's, Sue's son, Franklin, will appear in the film. Uh, the rumor suggests that Sue will be pregnant when she fir- when when she's first seen in the film and that Franklin will be born in space. If Marvel Studios has proven anything, it's that they aren't particularly concerned about uh, faithful adaptation stories or characters from the comics. However, Franklin Richards is a singular character even in a world of Marvels, uh, so his... So his inclusion is of note. In the comics, Franklin is a mutant uh, with immeasurable telepath- telepathic and telekinesic telekinesis abilities, who also happen to be ca- who also happens to be capable of reshaping reality. Indeed, as a young child, Franklin saved Earth's heroes from onslaught by creating an entire pocket dimension for them. Um, Following the 2015 event, Secret Wars, Franklin restored the multiverse by creating all new, all different realities. Recent uh, recent events in the comics have stripped Franklin of all his powers, but for one day a year. However, thanks to thanks to time travel and uh, flash forwards in the comics, some of its some of his future has also been told in those stories. Uh, and those stories may factor into the Fantastic Four. Uh, and then it says. Uh, Relevant to the film's potential plot, Franklin Richards has long has a long history with Galactus. When Franklin was just a young boy, the great devourer of worlds already feared his power. By the time that he was an adult, Franklin became so powerful that Galactus served as his herald. And in the alternate 
Earth X universe, Franklin became Franklin's be, Franklin became Galactus. It's not clear exactly what exactly what ties Max Shackman and the Fantastic Four established between the two characters, but some buzz has reached our ears uh, that there will be some connection between Franklin and Galactus in the film. It's clear that Reed, Sue, Johnny, and Ben have an active have been active for quite some time in their universe, and Franklin's birth takes place after the team is well-established as heroes. That means it's likely that whatever Galactus is up to, this may not be the first time they have encountered him. It's not. It's going to be the second time that they have fought Galactus. I don't think it's the second time they fought Galactus, but I think they fought him quite a bit when we first, when we first see them. Um, hold on just one second. Hey, shut up! Um, then he says, uh, rumor control, Franklin Richards does not look to play an integral role or, or does look to play an integral role in the film, which will establish some connection, what we already read. So boom, boom, boom. That's what we know about Franklin or uh, what Charles is kind of talking about there, what they're going to, what's going to be going on with Franklin within so far that we know within the film, um, no one should be surprised by the not sticking to uh, the comics continuity, the storylines there. Marvel never does that. Um, it's very rare that they do do that in the MCU. So, But that is the news there with the Fantastic Four and what's going to be going on with Franklin. I mean, as I said when I first started this, that's not really news there on, on that front be, as far as Franklin being in the film and Valeria. We already knew that. Uh, both of them are going to be in the film. Um as long uh, along with Herbie, Herbie is also going to be in the film. So it's they they're already a, the established Fantastic Four. They're not like any Fantastic Four we've seen in any of the other live action films. So they're already going to be established. So uh, we'll have to just wait and see. But that is what we've got there for the Fantastic Four. What we have for uh, Deadpool. What we know for some of those other things. We're still. Oh wait, the first trailer for Joker just dropped just dropped all right so we will watch this trailer for joker because that just dropped um i don't know okay we'll have to we'll watch this trailer um for the joker really quick and then we'll see what you guys are thinking but here it is let's watch it <laughs> Raymond said sound like a <laughs> shut up uh, G says I said uh, used to yell that at my dogs okay oh wait you can hear it Raymond okay everybody can hear it I'm sorry I'm gonna start it over Grace told me he couldn't hear it okay they said it's very low oh hold on let me let me fix the volume hold on sorry my fault Okay, here we go. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I kind of feel the way about this one that I felt after uh, watching the Deadpool trailer. For me, uh, the Deadpool trailer was like, oh, yay, yay, Deadpool's coming. But it wasn't... It did not make me react, kind of like this one. I'm st I'm still ready for Joker 2. I'm ready for Folly of Dude, but it just didn't make me, that's not what I was, for a teaser trailer, and and I guess I could just, I want to see this for myself really quick. What did the teaser for the original look like? Uh, Joker. So five years ago, this was the teaser that made me want to watch the first one more than that. The trailer or the teaser trailer for Folly Abdu made me move the needle for me really wanting to go see uh, the second one. Not that I don't want to still see it. I do still want to see it. It's not like I'm burning to see it, though. I'm not going and talking to people about the teaser. I'm not tweeting the tweet teaser out saying, oh, my God, did you see this? It it. I don't think that they did that great of a job on this teaser trailer. I thought, you know, I, I think if this is a billion dollar film and this is the sequel to a billion dollar film that we all thought was never going to get a sequel to begin with because it didn't warrant for one, in my opinion. I 
don't know that this gets those fans that put a billion in the first Joker's pocket excited like that. I don't know that people that watch this one. That's why I said, you know, when they started, when they said they were doing a sequel, everybody knows, I've said this before on this channel, the Joker is my all-time favorite villain, all-time favorite villain. You have to be very careful when handling the Clown Prince of Darkness. You have to. And this seemed... Obviously, Flex, uh, our, our Arthur Fleck, um, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker was different than any joke that we've had prior. Um, and that's fine. I, I enjoyed that. I dug that a lot. I thought he did a great job. You've often heard me make the comparisons to Heath Ledger and Joaquin. Joaquin did a great job, in my opinion. No Heath, but he did a great job. But this, again, just does not uh, get me excited for it. Um, um, and I wonder what the conversation is online right now. Uh, just out of curiosity. Uh, let's see. It's been enough time. I'm sure people are talking about it now. Um, just trying to see if somebody has yet. Let's see. Latest. Here we go. Someone said Joker 2 looks really good, actually. Someone said Joker 2 looks mid. Someone said, and it's a different language. Um, someone said, if y'all couldn't tell, I wasn't feeling the Joker 2 trailer. I really enjoyed uh, the first movie, but this trailer didn't do it for me. I think that's where a lot of people honestly are with it. Um, someone said... Someone said, Need Joker 2, ASAP, Lady Gaga and Joaquin Phoenix together will be a masterpiece. Someone said, Joker 2 trailer. Um, I'm going to scream. Someone else said, um, Not going to lie, the trailer is pretty damn good. Someone said, I've never had such a bigger switch up on a movie than this one when they announced it was a musical. Um... I mean, the online conversation is typically, I mean, it's, I mean, not typically, it's what I thought it was going to be. Um, I mean, there are people that are saying it does look good, but it looks like there are more saying that it's not, it looks mid, and it doesn't look that great, then it looks good. Someone said Joker 2 is going to be Cheeks, like the first movie, but I digress. The first one was great. I like that first one. That first one was really good. Um, someone else said... I will be seated for Joker 2. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just the same kind of more, again, more people saying it doesn't look great than people saying that it does look good. Um, and then, not to mention, for those that don't know, it does have 15 cover songs. So it will have 15 cover songs within the film. Um, I, I mean,. But you guys let me know. What do you think of? What are you guys thinking of what Joker 2's trailer was? It did. I, we waited. We waited uh, for that. We waited for that. I thought that shit was coming out at 630. I could have watched that in my bed. Um, but you guys let me know what you guys are thinking of Joker 2. I see um, D-Sizzle, say, D-Sizzle said Joaquin looks old as hell. He's 49 going on 60-something. Raymond said snooze. Xavier said that didn't move the needle for me either. Um, Gray said that's her Oscar nomination, but I'm not excited about it. He also said the original teaser told the story and set the tone of the film better. Yeah, that the original teaser, that teaser was good. And again, it made me want to go watch the film. This one did not... Make me say, hey, I need my tickets for Fale Abdu, because that did not do it. Raymond said, see, this is a teaser trailer telling us a bit about what's, what this story is about. Yeah, right. Uh, Gray then said, um, they got to be holding the good. Now, okay, thank you, Gray, for saying that. He, let me read everything he said. Now they must. Now they uh, got to be holding the good stuff for later. Gaga's the selling point uh, this time around. We'll probably see more stuff leading up to the release. Very good point. And it's just a teaser. Um, I'm trying to think of another teaser that didn't really move uh, something for me either. I can't remember. It was recent, though. Damn, I don't remember. Um, it is just a teaser, though. You know, so we do still have the full length trailer that is going to come out. Um, so once we see that, 
And maybe that's the same thing for the Deadpool trailer with me. Again, the Deadpool trailer did not lessen my excitement, didn't increase my excitement. I'm still the same level of excitement I was for Deadpool. But maybe with that second full lead trailer, I might be like, oh, shit, the way I was with No Way Home. Um, who knows? Uh, but I'm I'm in the same boat as most of you and most of the people on Twitter. I'm in the same boat as them as well. Um, it just doesn't seem like a lot of people are that excited for this person is. Um, yeah. Yeah, so we'll see. We'll see. But that's what we've got right now. So, and that is the, uh, that's also the news for the day. That is the news for the day. Um, don't have much anything else. Um, like I said, for, for, um, Tales of the Empire, May 4th, that is coming up. I'm going to have all of, because they all drop the same day. So I'm going to do my reaction to those, put those out. Um, the reason, I know some of you were like, well, where's your reaction to 97 episode four? We didn't do that because Henry and I have decided since we're doing this new format of it, um, we're going to do it on a, I think I explained it. I don't know if I explained it that good, but the next, so I, when I drop episode five's reaction of X-Men 97, it's going to be dropped in a live stream. You will view it in a live stream format. Uh, it won't be viewed in a, and it'll still be, it'll still drop as a regular video, but it'll come out as a live stream first. Uh, so that's how we're going to try some reactions moving forward. Um, saw somebody else do it. I thought that was a brilliant idea. So we're going to do that as well. Um, so be looking for that to come out uh, either tomorrow or Thursday as when that reaction will be live for everybody to see. Um, so with that, it's those two things. Those are the two things we got coming up. We also have, obviously, Planet of the Apes coming out May 10th. So we'll be doing a review and everything to that. But as far until that comes out, Invincible, I'll, I'll, let me go on and say that. Invincible season finale aired. I didn't really care. Um, I still think Mark's a bitch. I, I know that he beat the shit out of the brain guy, but... Uh, Mark be getting his ass beat that entire... Mark got his ass beat season one. Mark got his ass beat season two. Mark got his ass beat by motherfuckers that really wasn't his dad in season two. Now, granted, they were... Some of them were other, um... Uh... Viltrumites, but... The dude with the brain was whooping his ass when he was flying through them dimensions. He was whooping his ass when he was standing in his living room. So... I like Invincible a lot. I do. I like that first... But this second season didn't capture the magic of that first season. That first season, the the first episode when Omni Man kills everybody had the internet in a chokehold. Everybody was like, "Holy shit!" That scene was going everywhere. There wasn't a scene or there wasn't talk like that for uh, Invincible season two. Um, I know they're already talking about season three with whatever they did today, um, the logo changing to a blue instead of red. So we're moving on to season three. Um, for those of you that read the comics, you probably know what's coming i don't know i didn't read i didn't read the invincible comics but invincible season two was it was all right it was all right could have been better uh so um we'll we'll have to wait and see what that but that holds too we got the boys season three or season four sorry coming out um very soon so we've got a few things coming oh the acolyte well um i'll watch i'll watch and I'll make my determination if we're, if it's going to be live stream reactions or not, but we'll see. Um, I think that's it. I think that is it up until Deadpool. I don't think anything else is coming out up until Deadpool. Um, I also saw the news today um, that uh, the Jon Snow series got canceled. It's not happening. It's off the table. Kid Harrington said there's been conversations, but as far as now, it's off the table. So that is not happening either. Um, Gray said it gets better with Invincible. I I I think so. I mean, I I saw so I watched some YouTube videos explaining you know some shit that's gonna happen. So, um, or explaining the comics rather. Um, it does seem like it's gonna get good. Um, like I guess I still think that man's a bitch though right now. But uh, Xavier said X Men ninety seven made me forget the hype about Invincible. To be honest, yeah. Honestly, X Men ninety seven. I'm just ready for this episode. Um, I want them to stop putting these clips out every fucking day before the show, though. Marvel got need to stop doing that. I don't want a two minute clip before. Now that's taking two minutes out of the only twenty five minutes I get to watch the episode, so I'm down to twenty three. I don't want to see clips. I know Nightcrawler is going to be in it now. Thank you, Marvel. I didn't want to know that till I sat down, but um, 
Yeah. So uh, Raymond said, I didn't even try Invincible season two. I was so underwhelmed by season one. Really? I really thought season one was great. I liked his girlfriend a lot more in season two than I did season one. Did not like his girlfriend at all in the other. Um, Grand Region Thrag said, just wait until my namesake shows up. <laughs> Yeah, I saw somebody say he's or the Kirkman. Kirkman said he should he him and the other guy are supposed to be showing up soon. The more heavier set guy. I don't think that's Thrag. The other one. Um, D Sizzle said two and a half years is a long time to wait for season two. Exactly. That is very true. And maybe they have taken notes with this and made the changes, but it was way too long for us to be waiting for a season two. I think it, it was the waiting that diffused the hype for it. Oh, yeah. Um, Raymond said, if Mark doesn't want her, I'll take her. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I appreciate you guys. Appreciate everybody being here this evening. Um, of course, I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, I don't know I don't know if anybody else will be here, but I'll be here. I'll be here tomorrow uh, with whatever news comes out uh, throughout the day. Um, do appreciate you. And, oh, yes, I was going to say this, too. So, uh, last thing I'm going to say. Last thing I'm going to say. I've been grappling with this for a while, and I, I'm. This is something that when Josh talked about this and Josh over at Dinner Nerds and uh, talked about this in his most recent video, I thought to myself, I was like, uh, I was like, uh, this is this is so true. Uh, Josh and I think alike a lot of the time when it, and with a little conversation that he and I have had together. We think a lot on a lot of the different subject matters, especially when I see some of his videos and some of the things that I've said, some things he said. Um, we think a lot alike on some things, not all things, but some things. Um, and we think a lot alike on this matter as well. He just recently talked about how he posted a video with a thumbnail titled, I quit. I quit YouTube. And it wasn't so much that he's quitting YouTube. You know, when we when we had our hiatus and I got the um, job being the supervisor over at the or one of the supervisors in the mailing department at the lab, um, I uh, it took a lot of my time because we, we were on a we were we were doing great. We were on a fast roll. I think we were we we if we would have stayed on that same steam that we were on we would i think we would be at the 3000 subscribers i'm wanting us to be at now um because of the steam that we had we were doing really good but then we took that break invincible we took that break and that break has been hard to come back from as far as like getting new uh viewers in again appreciate the new subscriber we got tonight getting the new viewers in and things like that um but also with that comes the work of wanting to get in here and edit um, videos outside of the live streams we do. You know, if you go back for our, if you go back and you look at our channel, we used to do the edited videos, the voiceover videos, or the videos where it would be, you know, me talking about something about, you know, the Multiverse of Madness one or the Moon Knight ones that we did, or just whatever. Did a bunch of them. Did a bunch of them. Used to do that. But that is um, not the move. That I'm going to be doing, and I am no Josh. I am no Denim Nerds. Obviously, I'm not. I have not been in the YouTube skin game as long as Josh has been in it. But for me personally, um, editing videos is a nightmare. Um, I don't mind editing videos, but the time consumption that it takes to edit a video, even on my new computer, that is a, a godsend. I love this computer. It is. It. It's a. Uh, it is time consuming. It takes a lot of time. And um, sometimes you just and then you got to come up with, you know, the great thumbnails. You've got to come up with this. You got to come up with that. And it's 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 sometimes can be exhausting. Um, that's why when we started live streaming, I moved to I started doing this way before, uh, you know, Joshua started talking about it in his video. And I wasn't the first one. There's other YouTubers that did it this way, too. That's why you move to just doing live streams and taking the topics that we live stream and making them their own videos if it warrants for them to be their own video, if it's, if it's interesting enough. Um, and that is the, that's still the same move that we're going to do. So if you noticed uh, last week on the stream, on the video, on the channel, I was trying to figure things out. I was like, how am I going to do this? How is this comeback going to happen? So I started posting not just live streams, but I was posting. I, there were days I didn't live stream where I would just cover news and then post that video as the news. Um, 
That's not going to happen anymore. From now on, it's going to be strictly live streams. And the reason I've always loved live streams more than doing individual edited videos is because of the community, is because of the engagement. This is so much more interesting and fun for me to sit and talk with you guys and have you guys talk back and uh, let's get you guys' opinions on conversation or on topics. And then even when those two are in here, having conversation with them and things like that, it makes it a lot easier. It flows to me a lot more. It's more organic that way. It's more genuine and real. It's not, you know, not to say that the other videos that are edited aren't real, but this is raw, live, me, personality, hanging out, all that type of stuff, you know, not not, um, not an edited video, which is nothing wrong with edited videos. That's just not what I'm doing. So don't expect to see edited videos. Don't expect to see the, uh, um, unless I really want to do an edited video, don't expect to see uh, um, just the news in its own video. There'll be clips like they have been in the past, but it's not going to be like that. So I'm going to, the live streams are going to stay where we are, live stream. So that's why I said, I know Raymond's going to say, yeah, okay, whatever. Last week I did good. I was here every day last week and I, I wasn't here yesterday because I was trying to figure something out with that, with the, were we going to upload the X-Men 97 deal or not? Um, but Monday through Friday, especially the rest of this week. So tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday, expect me to be live. I am going to be live. And then the following Monday, Monday through Friday, I am back live streaming um, Monday through Friday. Regardless of if there are big topics to talk about or not, there's still a community that we can hang out with. There are still things that we can do outside of having a topic. We can do um, we can do tier list. We can do uh, we can just have a conversation. We can watch trailers. We can watch old stuff. We can you know just a bunch of different things that we can do. The, the conversation in the community and building and hanging out with everybody. That's the important part of my channel for me. Um, and that and just seeing a, a bigger channel, much, much, much bigger channel than mine, like Josh grappling with the same exhaustions. I was like, OK, OK, I'm not the only one. So I, I see. So the, it's for my channel and it's the same way we've been doing it. It's going to be live stream. So expect the live streams. Um, so we will be here for I will be here for sure. Now, if everybody else is here, that'll be uh, one thing. But I will be here for sure. Um also, one more thing, I will say this. This is not set in stone, but Trey may be back as well one day a week. Uh, his schedule has kind of slowed down a little bit where it might allow him to be here one day a week. So Trey may be here uh, one day a week as well. So Trey may be back in the building, and I do enjoy Trey's conversations that I have with him as well. So um, I appreciate, again, everybody being here. I uh, adore this community, and I want this community to grow, and I appreciate all of you that have been here with me since day one, day two, through day four. I appreciate all of you that have stuck with me through the hiatus and all the other ups and downs and the I'm going to stream and then not streaming and whatever, but uh, I do appreciate every single one of you, and I'm going to be here, as I've said. I was here last week, Raymond. I'm going to be here the remainder of this week. So if you uh, feel like it, like, subscribe, share with your friends. I do appreciate you guys. I appreciate everybody in the comments right now uh, co-signing that the live streams are better. Xavier, Raymond, uh, Rashad, D. Stizzle. Um, appreciate you guys. Raptor Cloak, great. Everybody, Grand Ranger Thrag, I will see you guys later. Uh, appreciate you guys being here. Like, subscribe, share with your friends, and I will see all of you guys tomorrow. Peace out.